What up, though? <laughs> what up, though, y'all? Hey, beautiful people. What's up, y'all? Hold on. So maybe I should name this. I'm going to call this Q and A with Nikki. All righty. All righty, right, right. Let me see if get this fixed. I can't pin it. Why can't I pin it? Pin it. Hi, what's up, YouTube? What's up, Facebook? What's up, Instagram? What's up, IG? What's up, LinkedIn? You guys, I used this little contraption the other day. Where's my other piece? Oh, I don't think I have the other piece. So I used this contraption the other day, right? And what this contraption is, I'm going to turn it off before I use my battery out. If anybody knows what this is, give me some hearts. Anybody know what this is? Give me some hearts. So this little piece of equipment right here, you guys know I've been talking about um, this case and how because I've been in this case, I've been suffering from a... I've always suffered from TMJ, but for some reason, it's just been like awful with this P-Valley case. So a friend of mine was like, I got something for you. It's going to work. It's amazing. And you know I got to try stuff before I, you know, share with with my people, right? Because I'm definitely not that much of a saleswoman. I don't think I do really, really good at sales unless I truly believe in something. And this is called a Theragun Theraface. So you guys know the percussion Theragun instrument. Let me show you all a little bit how this works. Let me show you how this works just real quick. So this is a little vibrating little... Si this is a little vibrating little thing here. Now I'll get your line out the gutter. But it's like a little vibrating, um, it's called um, percussion therapy is what they call it. And what I do is I put it on my temples. Y'all listen. Oh, my God. And it's just like a little beep, 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 beep. And it's, it's a nice, solid, you know, pretty strong little situation. And I go all the way around. And I'm telling you, it has worked wonders in just a little bit of time that I've had it. And then they also have like an infrared light that you put on there and what the infrared light uh, I'm told what it does, we're going to see, is that it um, gets your collagen activated and um, it is great for your skin. A lot of dermatologists recommend it. I know people do infrared light therapy when they're getting um, their joints and stuff like that worked on. So give it a try. Listen, this was not an endorsement. These people are not paying me for it. But in this day and age where so much crazy stuff happening in the world, when there's an opportunity to share a wellness or a self-care tip, you know what I mean? Maybe they'll give me a check. You guys go get enough of them and tell them Nikki sent you. And maybe they'll give me a check. But, you know, if they don't, oh, well. It's, if you, you get it and it works for you, tell a friend to tell a friend because it's bomb. It's not cheap. And I needed something I could travel with. But it was a gift for me. And, um, yeah, you plug it in, charge it up. And you just go at it. And you don't and you don't do like this. Like when you hear percussion, you th you think that you're doing this. This is not what you're doing. You just put it on your face and it's just kind of like blah, 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 blah. So, okay, guys. So it has been a very eventful week, eventful week for your girl. Um, I have had, oh, let me put it over here before I lose it. It also comes with a little compartment to sit right there. So it's been a super eventful week. For me, and I don't want to spend this live and spend this time um, just running my mouth. I want to actually hear from y'all because so often I get on these lives and I just go, 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 go. And it has been really super therapeutic. But I'm sure that there are questions that people might have for me. Um, there are some questions that I want to address. In fact, if you if you keep seeing me look around, here it is right here. If you keep seeing me look around, it's because I'm about to um, I'm about to get into the comment section. And I'm actually not even going to get into my comment section. I'm going to get into the comment section in on other people's comment sections like I always have been. Y'all, let me tell y'all something about these comments, baby. So, you know, I have been sharing with y'all that I sometimes feel like um, the algorithm don't like me. Um, but I think we all feel that way, right? And one of the things that I learned is that you have to stay consistent. Right. With YouTube, with Instagram, with all of your socials, you have to stay consistent. And sometimes people just be tired. Like you got to go live all the time. You got to post all the time. You got to do all this other stuff. 
Um, I put July on my third on my calendar to celebrate. We're about to go in there. We're about to go in there. Uh, I'm about to answer these questions. I'm going to go back, y'all. I'm going to go back, I promise. Um, and I know this is Q&A. So YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all the various places. I would usually do nights with Nikki, but I'm doing it actually from my office um, because I'm in study, 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 study mode. You guys, I really, when I say I could probably become a, well, um, that's a lie. I can't never become no lawyer. I ain't Kim Kardashian, baby. But when I tell you the information that I have learned, um, the information and knowledge that I've gained, um, somebody said, um, you know, when you take ownership of learning, it follows you for your whole life. The treasure follows you for your, your whole life, the gems. And that is indeed the truth. I have learned so much. So I know you guys see me. Um, when I'm coming out of gym, my adrenaline is flowing and I'm and I'm going on my lives. All of those lives you can check out, actually, if you tune in or if you become a subscriber to, to my channel, right? Uh, I know it's always a subscri subscriber, subscriber to the Instagram channel. You see all my IG rants because I think rants are important. I think rants are important because let's talk about Brian McKnight. Let's get into Brian McKnight, ladies and gentlemen. I don't have my horn. Where my horn is at? Hold on. I'm going to get into some sound effects tonight. Hold up, y'all. We're going to have fun tonight because I'm on YouTube and the YouTube people be playing with their little stuff and I want to try to play with mine. Hold on. Where is it at? Hold on. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. And get y'all questions together because we answering them real, real, real on this here night. Where are my freaking sound effects? Man. Okay. I ain't got my sound effects. Okay. I can't do them. Um, please also subscribe to... Press like, press subscribe. Let me get my YouTube language down. Instagram, hold on for a second. Let me talk to my YouTube people, my people over here. Please press like. What else am I supposed to say? Press subscribe. I'm supposed to say, um, dang, what do YouTuber people be saying? Set, up, set your notifications. And Instagram, y'all do that too. Set your notifications, right? Um, and shout out to my pulled up LinkedIn people who are tuning into this tonight. Shout out LinkedIn. I see y'all. What up Twitter? I see y'all too. Um, and what up Facebook? I don't even know if anybody's over there watching. Oh, actually I should be, hold on. I want to um, be able to interact with you. Whoa. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. that. Okay. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. She pulling it together. Okay. Jeremy Speaks. Hi, Jeremy Speaks. I see you, babe. It is so good to see you. I'm just acknowledging all my people. Now I'm acknowledging my people on IG too. Um, who else is over here? What's up, Twitter? I see you. Holla at your girl. Let's see what's going on in Facebook. Oh, we live in Facebook too. Got a couple people watching us on Facebook. And let me go over to LinkedIn. What's up, LinkedIn? Hey, LinkedIn. Camera's right here. Okay. So guys, um, it has been a very, very eventful week to say the least, to say the least, right? Um, there has been a lot going on in this here world of mine. And um, some of you have been there for the ride the whole time. And I'm very, very grateful to all of you for allowing me to get into my social media platforms and really share what's going on. Shout out to all the writers who are striking right now. Um, guys, I haven't had a lot of time to kind of put together. I want to drop some pictures in and give you guys, you know, some, some goodies here and there. Um, especially those of you who are watching me on the YouTube channels and whatnot, but shout out to all the writers, um, who are striking right now. This writer strike is a really, really important, super important, um, I'm getting to the questions. It's a super important thing for us to support, right? Because all these people are asking for is, uh, equality and to be, properly compensated for the work that they do, right? Um, if the words aren't on the page, some of the, your favorite actors, some of your favorite um, uh, shows and series would not exist, right? It's so important for us to take care of the people who are giving us, you know, a retreat from all of the terrible stuff that's happening in the world, right? It's so much stuff happening. And I think that it's so important for us as a community to, to lift those who whose jobs or whose work or whose ministry is to share great stories with us and share positive things with us, right? So um, let's get into some hot topics, okay? Let's get into some hot topics. I'm getting my Nikki Williams or Nikki Daniels or whatever, and then we're going to get into the real juicy stuff. But before I get into the hot topics, I'm going to share here this this piece that I have on, you guys. You see that 1111? That comes from my sister and the ring, honey. I came all the way prepared today. The, the, the jewelry 
the jewels that I'm rocking today are from my brownstone sister in Sorbora, the Barbie Alexis Jones. She has a wonderful, wonderful store called Shop Life Size. I tagged it and I'll tag it again later. I don't think I can pin, but one thing at a time. I'll tag her later. Ooh, this hair is herring, right? The curls fell a little bit and I ain't got no perm. So my, my, my leave out is a little swelly, but <clears throat> life size. Shop life size. Um, this was something that she made custom for me, and it is because she knows how important this, you know, this is to me. There's a whole story behind it and everything. So, you guys, please support Black woman-owned businesses, especially since she is my soror. Y'all, we got some great brownstone. So let me get the let me get the fun stuff out of the way. We got some really really awesome brownstone stuff coming, you guys. I know it has been a minute, and people are like, "What's going on? What's going on? What's, what's going on?" So, real quick. We transitioned. Um, we 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 actually have the honor and the blessing and the privilege of having the superstar sister of the superstar sister, um, Alexis Jones and Aaron Aaron Jones. They are sisters. They are the newest members of Brownstone. I'm so grateful for these women. Um, Y'all know it hasn't been a very um, it hasn't it hasn't been a very easy process, right? So to have women who you know. And, not to, and, and again, I'm getting to the Q&A, but to have women in my life who I believe and I know that God and, and my angels sent to make this thing um, better and bigger and more amazing. They're super talented. They're sisters. They're my sororers. They're professionals. They're incredibly beautiful. Don't let the beauty fool you. They work just as hard as they find. And uh, their hearts are pure and they're coming from the right place. And I think that um, Brownstone is going to do some things this year that are going to shock a whole lot of people in a really positive way. I can't say too much about, um, we'll start announcing more upcoming shows because it's a bunch of them coming, right? But we have one in particular that's coming and it's such a big deal. And I'm so, ugh, we are so excited about it. It's some of the most important people in the world we're about to perform for. So Pray for us and um, make sure y'all support us. All right, let me get to some of these questions. Oh, no, no, no. Before we get to the questions, I'm going to go all the way back up to the top so I get to the first person that had asked me a question because I said this was going to be Q&A. And I'm looking at my questions. I see y'all. Hey, fine, um, Chef Fine As Wine. I see you, girl. I see you. I see you. I see you. Um, please, if you're watching me on YouTube, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate that. Um, so before we get into the Q&A, I have to address this because I made a comment on the shade room. I was I have been all up in the comment section here lately. Mm. She's been all up in the videos dancing in the comments. For real. But I'm not the only executive all up in the videos dancing. Um, but... I have been all up in the videos, dancing in the comments. And I looked at the video on the shade room. This is just us having a good old little grown ass conversation. And nothing in this cup but some Welch's grape juice because I'm taking a probiotic. But here we go. So there was a post about Brian McKnight. And I watched the video of Brian McKnight. And Brian McKnight in the video was addressing his children. He was addressing his children. I'm so sure many of you saw it because everybody sees everything that's on the shade room. So Brian McKnight is addressing his kids. And the whole time I'm watching this video, right? And it was early in the morning. Y'all woke up with an excruciating headache this morning because I slept crazy. On, you know how you sleep crazy and it's like, and it was, and yeah. So I wake up and I look at this and I'm already slightly irritated because I got one of those little headaches where it's like right there. And I'm looking at this and I'm looking at how he's talking about his kids. Now, let me say this, first of all. And I'm and I'm addressing this because I made a comment in the shade room and the comment is making the rounds, right? People are like, oh my God, I saw your comment in the shade room. Oh my God. And after the fact, I was like, okay, I am a peer. I'm an industry peer. And while a lot of people be out in these industry streets being real messy, I am very direct. I will tell you what I have to say. I will get right at you, but I'm not messy. I love people. I love my peers. I want to make sure that we're all treated with respect and dignity and kindness. But this Brian McKnight situation, I was watching it and I was like, okay, here's what I think about it. And I didn't say all this on the shade room. I just cracked the joke. What I said on the shade room was, well, at least he was poised and articulate 
when he, as he was disowning his children because he was just so like, and the king is going to be my new son and I'm done with y'all and I don't want nothing else. And it was crazy because it was very like, wait, but is he like, like, is he, is he really doing, like, is he really doing this? Like in public this way? And let me say this as the mother of a 30 some year old auntie of cousin of, that grown family members get to a point, especially the ones that you kind of either help raise or like your little, y'all know what it is. They get to a point where they get real out of order, right? These millennials, we talk about they all the time, all the time we be talking about they, yeah. But let me give you the example. Remember when Kirk Franklin, Kirk, I hate to bring you into this. I love Kirk Franklin. I love, Kirk Franklin is one of my favorite people because he's so real. Kirk, I hate to bring you into this. But, Remember when Kirk Franklin had a moment with his son, and he said it how he said it how he said it like, and it was a whole thing, and he yeah. we that resonated a little bit more with us because we can all relate to get your motherfucking you ain't get you know what I'm saying we be we be right there with it. I get it. I understand the point that sometimes you just gotta let your kids know you taking their hands out the wheel, they don't get they together. But it was just that cold kind of, and my new family is better. And he didn't say that, I'm paraphrasing, but it was that kind of energy. And I just think that um, that is the thing that we all kind of, you know, the, all of the peers and celebrities and all of us folks, that's the thing we was kind of like, well, you could have said it with a little bit more love. Even if you're like done, which we can all understand. Even if you over the shit, which we can all understand. Sometimes you got to just say it. And sometimes when you say things, you know that whole, you know that whole concept of like, oh, he liked me because he was cussing me out and he was going off because he was mad because he saw me with, you know, and you feel like because somebody raised their voice or they're going off or they're saying it with a whole lot of passion, you know, that they're more hurt by it or they're more impacted by it. When your parent is is, is setting you free and telling you that they're going to go be with their other family, you want to at least feel like they get, they just a little bit hurt about it. Like they just a little snidge, like smidge kind of like, yeah, I love you. You're my kids. You mean the world to me. We've tried to do this over and over again. Like the same emotion and passion that you put into music when you like emoting that, like you could have had just a little cone, just a little edge of that in the delivery. And I think more of us would have related, but it just was very cold and calculated. And, but I get it, you know, in business, I'd be like that sometimes. Like I'm about to get into this, how I'm like that now with Phil Thornton and R&B Divas. But before I get into that, I'm going to let you guys ask me some questions. Cause that's what I said I was gonna do. Oh my! Some of the people might not be. Somebody said I've been spitting all week. I'm glad you see it that way. Okay, let me see what kind of questions we got. We go into these questions. Hold on. Okay, let me get to a question right here. Cause, cause uh, Jeremy, you've been asking me quite a few. When do, when did you feel lost? Oh, when do you feel you lost the love of singing, even though you have such a beautiful voice? Okay, Jeremy on YouTube. This is for you. He wants to know, when do you feel you lost the love of singing, even though I had a beautiful voice? Thank you for that question, Jeremy. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, I lost the love, I think, for singing when there were there was a, co a combination of things, Jeremy. It wasn't just um, that I was just one day I woke up and I was like, you know, I don't want to sing anymore. Right. Um, and it's crazy because both my parents, like the thing they wanted me to do more than anything. And a lot of my family members, you know, the thing they wanted me to do more than anything was sing because they're proud of me. And they're like, oh, you got such a beautiful voice, whatever. Um, but I think when I started to realize that, you know, like in the early part of my career, I felt like because I was overweight and I wasn't, you know, this beauty queen, you know what I'm saying? Um, I remember when I wanted to cut, this is interesting. And I don't even think I've ever really shared this story that much i remember oh my god oh my god i'm about to trip y'all out with this one they be coming oh these they be coming thank you jeremy because i don't think i've ever said this and if i have bear with me y'all but i remember i when i cut my hair off and i'm not gonna call the person out because i know that they had the best of intentions and i think that i know what they were trying to say but shout out to the crown act because i remember when i cut my hair so i had cut my hair before our deal and all other stuff, right? And the executive was like, oh, you know, 
you know, because we're going through a kind of phase of trying to decide if that's the look I was going to do because I had kind of like the little, the bit when we were recording the album, I had kind of a little Nate, Nita Baker, Halle Berry, I guess you want to call it, little shortcut with the short tapered back or whatever. And then I just woke up one day and I just cut the shit off, all of it. It was just gone. And they were like, you, you cut it all off. <laughs> they was like, every, like all of it? And I was like, yeah. And that wasn't a thing to do in the 90s, like to be like the big, mouth and big tall and wide you know black girl with no hair the bald headed girl but I was just like I think it's cute like my mom and it's so funny I posted a picture so then you guys know where it comes from I get it really honest I get it from my mom I'm gonna answer your question Jeremy I got so many stories one thing lead to the other I wasn't supposed to be talking I was supposed to be answering these questions but I'm gonna talk a little bit then I'm gonna answer these questions so my mother and my aunts beautiful women always wore their hair cut short. In the picture I posted with my mom and Kina's mom, and Kina's grandmother's hair was cut short. So it was just a thing. I don't know if it was a Detroit thing or not, but we grew up like feeling like black women were absolutely beautiful with no hair. Now with these 22 inches I got it hell of the day, you think that I was a little insecure about my stuff, but I ate. I, yeah, I said, I know I, I said, I could grow some hair. But I didn't want it then. And the network was like, I'm not network. The record company was like, ooh, we, you cut your hair for real. And I was like, yeah, I did. And I love it. And thank God I did because I do remember I ran into Keisha from Total. And she might not remember this. And she might be like, girl, what? But Keisha from Total, who I think is just the most, she's just so pretty. I don't know if y'all have ever, and I'm not, and if you see it, her in pictures and saying she's pretty is one thing. But to to actually be, to see her in person, like she is like, breathtaking. She's so beautiful. I've always felt like Keisha was breathtaking. She's just gorgeous in person. Some people just read really, really pretty on TV, but when you meet them in person, it's just like, damn, you're fine. So I remember she said, um, I, we saw each other in Macy's. Brownstone was in Macy's at the same time. Total was in Macy's in New York. And I remember she was just like, oh my God, I cut my hair because I saw your hair. And I was like, what? Are you kidding? Like, I was just like, and then like not too long ago, well, long ago, like probably about eight, nine years ago, I ran into Tiana Taylor at Ikea. Coming out of Ikea, she was like, oh my God, oh my God. She was like, I love you. And I was so geeked. I was like, and this was obviously before she was like superstar Tiana Taylor, right? And she had her hair cut short. She was like, I cut my hair. So when I realized how me just being this big girl with this big personality and this bald ass head inspired so many other young girls to rock the short do, I was like, okay. I love it. So, okay, but let me, okay, you asked me why I stopped liking it. So, that is an example of the hard hitting realities that I had to face me cutting off my hair, me being like 350 pounds, you know, me, you know, I remember the, the wardrobe stylist would just be like, oh my God, we can't find nothing to fit her. And this was not when it was like sexy like it is now with Lizzo and all the curvy girls and all that stuff to be a big girl. This is when being a big girl meant you wouldn't get no record deal or they was going to Martha wash your ass. And if you don't know what Martha wash your ass means, no disrespect at all, Martha wash, but they surely took her voice and put it on a skinny woman's body. And all of those snapped and, oh, 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 that's her. It's getting kind of heavy. Yeah. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. It's getting, it's getting. Y'all know what that is. That's Martha M the Wash. And then, everybody dance now. Dun, 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 dun. That's Martha Wash, baby. That's Martha Wash. And why didn't they use Martha Wash? Because she was a plus size woman. So, Jeremy, to answer your question, my weight, the fact that I was a very vocal, straightforward, just unapologetic apologetic black woman from Detroit, um, created such a barrier for me in terms of like really feeling accepted um, that I started to feel like... Oh, I'm not really doing this because I can sing my ass off and because music is fun and creative and whatever. I'm doing this because this is like a business. And then you start looking at the numbers and you start looking at everything and then everything happens and you wake up one day and you realize, wow, so this is really a business that really monetizes and capitalizes off of young creatives. And when the things get difficult and hard, you kind of left on your own to your own devices to figure it out. And I just fell out of love with... 
I've never been, just to keep it all the way real with you, I've, I'm, I've always wanted to be an actress and a producer and all that stuff first. Even from a very young age, you guys, I was like putting together plays in the garage. Like this is just, I was at school building sets downstairs in the basement. Like this was always, I was always a theater girl, an actor girl, a producer girl, right? I just, because I could sing and I could write songs, that's the thing that jumped off first. And I kind of started to feel like, TV and movies and and those things that I had not done would be um, more fun, uh, more honest, more transparent, more accepting because I was like, oh, Queen Latifah's a big girl and Loretta Devine's a, and, and, you know, I saw Nail Carter, like I saw the acceptance of more fuller plus size women represented surprisingly actually in television and film first, right? Before I was able to really, um, see that hardcore representation at the superstar level in, in music. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, you had your Aretha Franklin's and you had, you had your exceptions to the rule. Plenty of women, Ella Fitzgerald, they were plus size curvy women. But as we started to get into this place, music kind of does what, what, what happens in TV and, and reality TV in particular. Right. So in reality TV, what happens a lot of times, you know, I'm sorry, it's, it's impossible for me to not adjust my hair. Cause it's, these curls is curling and I did it myself and I'm proud of it. And I'm just looking at it and it's, cute okay so um what happens is that this trend shit starts to happen right so in music and in reality tv and in like easily digestible content it's all so trend based and if you don't fit into a trend it could be very disheartening and very um you know, very unfortunate because then you start to question yourself. You start to question your abilities. And, and that's what I started to do a lot, Jeremy. All right, let me get into some questions on Instagram. I hope I answered your question. I'm, I'm, I'm not all the way in love with it now, but I am much more in love with it than I've ever been because my sisters in, in Brownstone have made me like super happy about it. What was it like growing up as a Motown kid? Um, it was awesome growing up in Detroit as a Motown kid. As you can imagine, you know, everything is so fucking, excuse me. I'm trying not to cuss so much, but everything is so fucking amazing when it comes to creativity in the city of Detroit. Detroit is just, you know, Detroit is just what up though? Detroit is Motown. Detroit is just, you know, GM Chrysler Ford. Detroit is, Detroit is just one of the coolest, sexiest cities on the planet, according to Anthony Bourdain. Hello. And I mean, just think about all of the dope women from Detroit. So, you know, yeah, growing up in Motown was amazing. Growing up in Motown. I honestly believe growing up in Detroit um, is where I got that kind of, um, entrepreneurial spirit, you know, obviously my mother who grew up in Detroit, you know, I think, um, so much I want to tell y'all about the greatness of the city of Detroit. There's so many stories that I am going to tell in partnership with some of my amazing, incredible, dope ass friends from the city of Detroit. But when you learn about Black Bottom, when you learn about the Detroit Housewives League, when you learn about, and don't go taking my ideas because I'm naming shit and then just decide because you ain't got no ideas that you're going to get somebody to go and do a rewrite because, you know, that's what they do on Hollywood, right? Rewrite. Um, but I digress. So many beautiful stories of just, you know, look at, look at BMF. I mean, they, it's a different kind of entrepreneurship, but it's entrepreneurship nonetheless. So when we say Detroit hustle harder, Detroit girls hustle, I mean, look at, look, like for real, let's, let's, numbers don't lie, people do. Look at um, the lip bar. Look at, um, like, I, the list just goes on and on. Look at Motown. Look at, like, you know what I'm saying? Pine Alley, this is the head of J.P. Morgan, Jason Vance, this is so many dope people from Detroit. Nikki Gilbert, Kenya Moore, what, Courtney Adelaide, main choice. Like, not saying they're not dope people everywhere else, because it is. They're dope people everywhere. But Detroit is something in the water. So growing up in Detroit makes me feel super proud. And we've always been the underdogs. We've always been the ones that people have said, um, you know, oh, you're from Detroit? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. And we say it with our chest now. And now so many people, I see y'all. I see y'all. So many people out here in these streets coming to the D. But we welcome that. Shout out to the Jasmine brand and Angela Yee and Topeka Sam who bought um, they came together and they invested in a multi-unit building in the city of Detroit, and they're going to make it available for women. And certain percentage of units are going to be for women who are being released from prison and re rebuilding their lives. And I just feel like that feels like a from the bottom up season. What is, would this be? Season four situation, which we're talking about that too. We talking about that too. Oh yes. Me and flavor unit done had a couple chit chats about it. So that's coming as well. Um, 
But yeah, Detroit is a, a beautiful, wonderful thing. Um, I put July 3rd on my calendar. Is the, the, the date is July 5th. I need my prayer warriors on July 5th. That is when our um, hearing with the judge in L.A. is in boy, oh boy. I got butterflies about it. Why end the show after it's built? So many heartfelt fans. Oh, okay. This is about R&B Divas. All right, let's see what's happening over here. Jeremy speaks. Do you play the piano? No, I do not. Um, and we're going to talk about Kena. Hold on. Um, why end the show? Okay, let me say this. Um, why not ask for a percentage? Oh, wait, which show are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about P Valley. I thought you were talking about R&B Divas. Oh, he's talking about P Valley. He's talking about P Valley. Hold on, let me plug up my phone. It's about to die. Hold on, y'all. You talking about P Valley. Hold on. All right. Uh-oh. Here we go. Oh, no. Don't be like that. Sorry. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. All right. Sorry, guys. Hold on for me for one second. I'm trying to pull this thing together. It's a gimbal, guys, so it's wilding out. Okay, here we go. All right, we're back. All right, this is our this is the P Valley question. Can you clarify espionage a espionage in YC? Can you clarify? They they're asking me first of all. Okay, I can clarify. The question is why not just asking for a percentage in a settlement, stating something about your original script. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, this this phone is going to die, so I might have to come back. For those of you who do not know, I am in the middle of a major, 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 major litigation with um, SARS, Lionsgate, P-Valley, Katori Hall. So this question this person is asking me is, why end the whole show? The first part of your question is, I am not ending anything. I don't have the power to end anything. Well, I mean, we all have the power to do whatever we want to do, actually. But I don't choose to exercise my power for um, that kind of stuff. You know, I believe that the simple solution in my heart to the P-Valley uh, situation is... Um, I don't know that there is a simple solution right now, honestly. I don't I don't know that there is a simple solution for it at this point. Um, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to have to fight hard for what I want, right? Because I think, unfortunately, we've come to a place in that situation where I realize that stars and Lionsgate, um, because really, I mean, if, if we're honest about it, that's... I mean, you know, Katori's not paying her. Nobody's, the people who are paying lawyer fees for everybody I named in this litigation is Stars and Lionsgate. So at the end of the day, you know, right, that's what it is. And I don't think that they have the respect for me as a, as a black woman or as a writer. I don't think, I don't know. And the reason why is because I've, I've been in this situation with them for a long time and I've been very respectful considering all the things that we're now very clear on. And I think that it's unfortunate because it is obvious to anybody who goes to WIRFmedia.com that there was some form of copyright infringement. And it's a shame that it has come to this because I've tried very, very hard for a very long time to avoid all of this mess, all of this public fiasco, all of this, you know. And when I get into these conversations with you guys in social media, it is not because I want your sympathy. Well, kind of. I want you to. I want your understanding more than anything, but it's mostly because I want people to understand that um, you have to be willing to fight for some stuff in your life, no matter how scary it gets, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how expensive it gets, no matter how it damages your reputation. In the meanwhile, if you're telling the truth, all the people are gonna, be, you know, celebrate you in the end anyway, right? So I don't take it that seriously. I mean, when y'all find out what the truth is, it's interesting. I posted something. I posted something today and I reposted Frank Ski show and they posted um, previous post about 
Katori saying that she was shutting the show down because of the writer strike. Now, maybe part of her is supporting writers, right? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not in a woman's head. I don't know. I doubt it. But, um, and I was just so excited to see that there was outlets out here that care about my story. There are people out here who have been writing. Because Frank Ski and, and um, Nina Brown and Rashawn Ali were the first people on a public major platform that gave me the opportunity to share my story. They were the first people. When so many other people, ooh, watching, looking, peeking out the side of the curtain. I don't know. Should I, should I be down with her? Because I don't know if she... They, they like, ten toes immediately, right? Because they watched the comparison video, they read the complaint, and they see clearly what 99.99999% of the people who watch that see. And they stood on it. When I watch black women, other black outlets that have reach and that have the ability to either remain neutral and by remain neutral, if you're going to have a, a show that's accused of copyright infringement and it is as obvious, I could see if it was just really frivolous and I just was like making this up and like it, w it wasn't an obvious comparison video where you're like, okay, it's the same exact beginning, middle. Like there's a story here for all you journalists out there, especially ones I know personally, right? Um, and I saw a couple of them that I had a lot of respect for just riding the wave just riding the wave. And I think it's really uh, disappointing and it's hella disrespectful when you pick a side. And you pick a side when you have a show on your show and you have a huge platform and you're promoting the hell out of it without consideration for the fact that there is a very legitimate copyright infringement claim against that show. Especially when you use the opportunity to, you know, bigger shows, bigger names, when someone bigger is involved, you, you use the opportunity to like promote that, oh, do you think it could be copyright infringement? It's the same. It was, it was, it's been, it's been disheartening to watch people go girl, go girl, I see you girl. Because I think in our community, one of the things I wanted to talk about with us, with black people. We got this fake news thing real bad. We got this shit so bad. It's terrible. It's awful. It's terrible. The shit that's happening with Jamie Foxx is bad enough. Us. But for us to continue to run with this fake news shit in our community is sickening. Non-black communities do not just go out and just run and just say shit and just go out and destroy people without having it be. I mean, you know, some instances, but for the most part, you know, in their communities, they don't just go out and destroy people and pick people apart or, or spread rumors or say a bunch of terrible, awful stuff if they're not enough facts to support it. Right. They wait until they get more facts and information and then they, you know, do what they got to do, say what they got to say. Right. Journalism is journalism. Right. But we do it too much. We do it too much. We did it with Jamie Foxx. We do it every time. Oh, I heard in this person. And, and, you know, when Maxie died, you know, when Maxie died. Oh, she failed. She fell out of soccer game. Oh, she bye bye. TMZ done ran with a story. First person to say it is what we believe. And we got to stop doing that shit. And we got to stop doing it because it really affects people's lives. 1101. Maxie's birthday is 111. I love you, sister. Ooh, I love you with my whole heart. <sighs> okay. Is 1101. I'm talking about Maxie's a whole thing. 111. I love you. <sighs> this be always happening to me on these damn lines. <sighs> so what we have to start learning how to do in our community is give each other some grace. Give each other the opportunity to speak up and speak our truths, right? Because we already know, you know, corporate greed and on every level. Like now a lot of artists are talking and I'm so proud to see, like now it's the thing, right? But I've been standing on my soapbox. I've been, you know, calling it what it is for a very, 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 very long time. 
and for my whole career, right? And as it's become more popular, now people are starting to see it. And I'm not tripping because the point is that people are starting to see it. It doesn't matter how long I've been doing it. The point is we're all doing it now more. I'm just saying I wish that in our community that we gave each other more grace and gave each other more the benefit of the doubt and stuck together and showed the unity more like, you know, we did in the 90s, more like they did in the 70s and in the 60s, right? Because those are the movements that made the movement in our communities, right? And we need movement in our communities because we've been sitting stagnant as fuck. And people are losing like everything, including their minds, which is the shit that you really don't want to lose because you need that. And I decided that instead of losing mine, that I'm just going to say, what the hell I have to say, right? I'm not going to um, pretend like things that hurt me don't hurt me. I'm not going to pretend like it's okay for somebody to just say some shit about me in social media and they got a little ghost block account and I'm not going to respond. I'm going to respond. We're going to say what the hell we got to say um, because that's the world we live in now. Um, and I don't know how I got on that because you asked me about stopping the show. I'm not stopping the show now. If if she hadn't lied and said that she was shutting the show down, well, I didn't know she lied. I can't disparage the lady. Allegedly, she lied. Allegedly, what she really meant was Nikki Gilbert's two motion for dismissals went through. The judge in Atlanta denied it as moot. And the judge in L.A., once it was, he denied it as moot and transferred it to L.A. so that people could be subpoenaed and we can hear from everybody. And the judge in Los Angeles um, denied it as well. So we are going into our summary judgment phase. And that is going to be, that's a tough phase, guys. That's the big deal. That's the real deal, Holyfield. That's like the championship round. It's the last opportunity that these people got to tell these people that they are not substantially similar. And as easy as you can look at this, as easy as you with two eyes, four eyes, however many you got, can look at what I have created and look at what Katori allegedly has created. You see that they're the same. They the same. The girl come with the suitcase, this red beat up suitcase. She gets hired the same day. First of all, let me say this. The most hurtful part about all of this, and I've said it before, is to watch Uncle Clifford's character get all of these awards and accolades when that Tata Burlesque character, it was a play, and it wasn't as flushed out with a $100 million investment behind it. But that Tata Burlesque non-binary, den mother, that character that I've known my whole life through various friends and loved ones who are in the LBGTQIA community, the stories that they told me, some of them even attempting to take their lives, you know, the, the, the den mother quality that all these amazing, incredible choreographers and um, uh, stage directors and all these people who throughout my life and career that I, you know, encountered, you know what I'm saying? Putting them into this lovable, amazing character that goes on to win all these awards, NAACP Image Awards and this and that and the third. That's the most disheartening part about it all. And especially because when I pitched it to the president of Lionsgate, he's like, oh my God, I love the name Tata Burlesque. I love this girl. Oh, this is going to be great. I'm going to go home, read it. Then I'll come back and bring it to my team. We're going to get back with you. Get back with me was me seeing P Valley on TV. So I don't want to sound like a broken record. I'm going to say this and I'm going to speak on it until the wheels fall off because my platform and being able to get out here and say it. And the other thing is, you guys, they limit my, the algorithm limits my my um, visibility so much that I have to always be talking about it. And I'm sorry if you follow me very closely and you get all the alerts and shit and you'd be like, OK, she's talking about it again. I have to. You don't understand. I have to because they limit it. Like I'll put up a post and it'll get like three views. But then I'll do a fashion post and now it'll be 25,000 views and 963 likes. So it's clear that um, when we talk about ownership and when we talk about elevation of our community and we talk about all the opportunities that we should have and don't have because they've been taken from us because we are told that we are more appropriate. You know, I was reading this article. And I was reading an article and they talked about how everybody gets their, everybody gets rewritten in Hollywood like this, you know, through my research. So this is another reason I love talking to y'all because I be so deep in the research, like 24 hours a day. I'm probably going to be up to four o'clock in the morning today 
just researching what these motions mean and understanding substantial similarity and, you know, how quickly substantial similarity could not be proven. If this, that, you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. You got to learn all this stuff so that I'm not sitting in the courtroom listening to a whole bunch of people talk about my life and my livelihood and not being aware. But when you're in the process of becoming made aware of all this stuff, and then I got to go back and I got to rewatch all the videos and then I got to go back and sit and, and look at the, the very beginnings of like borrowing money to produce this and using this credit card to get this prop and that. And I'm like, and I'm actually in a going in a seven figure freaking litigation. No, I'm exaggerating. But it's, it's very expensive and you see this and you have to, you have to like take all this in because you got to be aware. It's a lot. So I love being able to talk to y'all and vent and share um, and they hate it. That's the other reason why I do it all the time. Just to keep it all the way real with you. Them fucks hate it. They can't stand when I be on here. They mad. They be mad as the haters that be mad at me talking about it. Why she keep talking about it? Because I don't want to talk about it no more. And let me tell you something. For the right price, the words P and Valley will not come out of my mouth ever again. I won't say it. I won't reflect on it. I, we know what an NDA is. It's all good. I don't want to talk about it no more. But I'm not going to allow someone to take the opportunity that I spent almost 20 years of my life creating generational something that could create generational wellness first and well second for my family. I'm not just going to sit back and allow you to just, you know, just I ain't built like that. Right. And if you want me to hook you up, like I am a freaking creative genius. Right. So if you want me to make things better, that's what y'all really need to be asking. Let this lady come in and fix the problem. I'd be willing to do that, but it's going to cost you. Right. I'm not cheap. No more. I've been cheap for a long time. Well, I have been cheap. What I've been has been treated like a third and fourth class citizen. As creatively genius as I know that I am. I don't need nobody to tell me. And that's not ego. Baby, listen, don't ask me to come up with no budget for nothing. Don't, there are certain things I cannot do. There are certain things that are just not my ministry. But when it comes to creating ideas, when it comes to putting ideas together, when it comes to putting shows and concepts and characters and stories together, I mean, look at the success. I wouldn't even be... Going to court for R&B Divas, which I'm about to get into in a minute. Going to court for Hollywood Divas, which I'm about to get into in a minute. Going to court for P-Valley and Soul Kids Cabaret if the ideas that I came up with were not worth it. If the ideas and the concepts that I was able to come up with did not have value, the man wouldn't have gave Katori Hall $100 million for P-Valley. So when I sit back and I realize that I've come up with ideas and characters and stories that have generated hundreds of millions of dollars for people and people just believe that they can just kick me to the curb and just knock me over to the side and just, you know, or, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and tell me that I'm not tethered to reality. Um, we just got to go because I know that God is on my side. I know that I'm going to win this case. Oh my God, it's 11-11. See how God be working? In Jesus' name, I'm going to win this case. In Jesus' name, R&B Divas is going to once again be the biggest freaking show on television. Hello, produced, executive produced by Faith Evans, Nikki Gilbert, and any of the divas who's smart enough to get on this train. Yep. Um, health, wealth, uh, wisdom, um, family, love to all of y'all. It's 11-11. Y'all make a wish. I wish that I'm able, what I want to, what I really truly want to do, what gives me, I want to be able to create platforms for creatives for a very long time. Lord, give me the opportunity to live a long life where I create stories and platforms and opportunities for people who deserve it and I empower and live my community. I want to buy like two or three schools in Detroit. I want to make them incubators and I want to develop creatives in Jesus name. Amen. So I had to get that prayer now, get that prayer, that wish, because it was 11 11. I'm, I'm woo-woo like that. See, 11-11, y'all. I, I don't talk about it. I'll be about it. 11-11, stop playing. All right, let me get to these questions. She always running her mouth first. Let me charge this phone. Hold on. Oh, Lord. Y'all get y'all questions together. And I'm going to try to do it. <laughs> uh oh, somebody says I'm about super fake in R&B Divas. I hope they ain't talking about me because everybody who know me know one thing I'm not is super fake. Mm-mm. 
Uh oh, hold on, guys. Bear with me. This fucking gimbal is just okay. Yes, I think it's working. Oh, it's working. Mm 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 mm. Don't move. Uh oh, shit. Stop being so sensitive. Hold on, guys. Hold on, YouTube. I'm trying to get Instagram together. Damn. Hold on, everybody. I think we got it. All right, I'm leaving it alone. I'm leaving it alone. The hell? <laughs> Shit. Ah, I hate it. I hate it. All right. All right, I'm going to have to hold it. I have no choice. I got to hold it for a minute. I hate holding my phone. And that's God's way of telling me not to try to be on here for 26 hours. Um, all right, let's get into this R&B Divas tea because I think somebody was asking me about it. Hold on. Um, if you don't like her, why are you on her page? Oh, I, you know what? Somebody's probably talking shit and I don't even know because I ain't been paying no attention. So you ain't got to even worry about defending me. Let me tell y'all something about me. And I need the, the haters and the trolls and the people who have come here with ill, nefarious intentions. I need y'all to understand this. I'm one of the people who really, you know, people, there's a lot of people say they don't care. Like, a lot of people be like, I don't care, I don't care, care. Look at me, read my lips. I really don't give, like, I really don't give, I don't care, right? When you lose as many people as I was lost, lost in my lifetime, when you have lost as many opportunities and, and, and have been, had to fight real people, like not trolls on social media, like multi-billion dollar, the last thing I'm really that concerned about is someone who doesn't like me and someone who doesn't mean me any will, Ill will, anything positive and somebody who, more important than anything, doesn't know me. Like, I don't base my value and my self-worth on people who have no idea um, who I am, right? And 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 let me get into this R&B Divas thing. Um, hold on, let me look at these questions real quick. Hey, everyone. Oh my God, it's a lot of questions down here. Oh goodness, oh goodness, y'all. Oh, I didn't know I had so many questions down here. Hold on. Um, Complex in that, Tracy Spencer. Ooh, I love a Tracy Spencer. What do you want to see moving forward? I don't know what that means. Okay, let's see. Hold on. Hey, Christy! You guys, my friend Christy, who is amazing, has an amazing restaurant in New York City. Okay, I don't know if she wants me to put our business in the street. Go to Soak. Soak Bath Products, I think. Damn, Christy. I don't know if I said that right. But she is my sister, and her products are amazing. And I've said it before. She's and She introduced me to Palo Santo. She is a, an incredible, incredible woman. And she has an amazing... Babalucci is her restaurant in New York City. Thank you for the... Oh, my gosh. Y'all have been giving me... Oh, my God. Thank you, Chris, for the for the um, badge. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Hassan. What's up, Hassan? I see you. I see you. I see you. Um, it's a shame that legendary Anita Baker had to go to court to get her copyrights for her music. Yeah, that is a shame. Y'all, do y'all know Anita Baker unfollow me? Anita Baker unfollowed me, and I think she unfollowed me because of the R&B Divas thing. I was crushed. Who has Anita Baker unfollowed them? And they from Detroit. So I probably shouldn't even told y'all that, but... Because it's really embarrassing. But y'all know I just say it because I don't care in real life. I mean, I do kind of care that Anita Baker unfollowed me. But I'm like, damn, what did I do? And then I tried to follow her. I was like, please, um, like, what did I do? And, you know, I, I know it probably has a lot to do with um, the R&B Divas thing. I know the R&B Divas thing was not a good look. And that's why I want to get into. Let me, let me get into that with you guys right now. Because it is a very um, big topic here lately. Because it's a lot of shit going on out here in these streets. So yesterday I woke up to, if you've been on my page, you see that I posted a few times about, um, and forgive me y'all on YouTube and, well, all of y'all, I'll be, be kind of looking at different screens. Um, but I, there, someone posted, Phil Thornton posted a really derogatory, awful, terrible, um, I felt because, and let me and let me say this, 
it's not even that what he said was so terrible. What made it so egregious and crazy is who he said what he said to. So Phil Thornton is, was, because I don't know if you watch my other live, but I've made it very clear that Phil is not um, going to have anything to do with the original, actual R&B Divas franchise. And he should be on notice that if he continues to disparage and say things that are not true about the franchise or go off on any more network executives who we may or may not be in business with or talking business with or whatever, then he's going to get a letter. And the letter's not going to be nice, and I'm not going to waste my time. Like I said, I spent a whole lot of time in this P-Valley situation being um, trying to be nice and trying to be amenable and trying to be cool. And it did nothing um, to, well, you know, it's all relative, but I don't, I don't see it as, as, as anything to help me. All it did was cost me more money. Right. So I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to get right at people. I'm going to get right directly. It's just going to be boom right here. Uh, Cause I don't mean any harm to anybody. I don't um, disrespect people's businesses like that. And I don't expect people to disrespect mine. So, uh, Phil, you, you all notice that I would appreciate it if you would stop uh, disparaging the r and Divas brand as one of the owners of the brand, right? The owner of the company that owns the brand. I would, I would ask you to do that. Um, so yesterday, Phil, and, and I'm not, and, and let me say this because a lot of people are like, well, you ain't got to tell everybody that you own and you ain't got to boo, 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 and woo, 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 woo. Yes, I do. Damn, now my computer's going out. Hold on. Yeah. She got to tell everybody. And I'm going to tell y'all why. Hold on. Plug this computer. So. The reason why it's so important, <clears throat> in my opinion, to make sure that our community is aware of how dope ownership is. Like ownership is the thing that you got to be bragging about. I'm not saying I, I own R&B Divas and it's worth a hundred million dollars. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I own what I worked for. I own what I created. I'm proud of it. I brag different. Um, it is so important for us to encourage one another to pursue ownership at all costs, to fight for it with everything that we have. Because that is the only thing that is going to get the black community out of this horrible, horrible rut that we are in financially, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, you know, mental illness and gun violence and um, trafficking and all the terrible things that plague our community. Those are directly connected to poverty. Right. They are they're directly connected to poverty. And the reason we haven't been able to get out of this vicious cycle of um, poverty in the black community is because we are so consumed with wanting to one up each other. We are so consumed with wanting to go behind each other's back. And do foul, egregious, shady shit to one another because we want to get what we believe is the only piece of pie on the table. As opposed to us realizing that if all of us bring our ingredients, we could actually make five or six pies. We could sell them to just get more ingredients, make 10 to 15 pies. But somebody's got to be the baker, right? Somebody's got to be the person to actually put the pie in the oven and go sell it, right? Somebody's, so because everybody wants to be the baker and the seller, and nobody wants to be the person in the kitchen just mixing ingredients and, you know, putting batter and eggs and shit like that. You're like, you want to be up front all in the videos dancing that we always end up in a situation where we are fighting each other for scraps as opposed to figuring out how to work together to multiply the opportunity. And that is what has been the story of R&B Divas since day one. I have tried to be really nice about how I have expressed how disrespected I have been in this R&B Divas franchise by Phil Thornton. He has been more disrespectful to me than anybody I think has ever been to me in my life, right? Even Katori Hall and the people at Lionsgate, cause you know, hey, I don't know them. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't leverage the opportunity they had to come and slide in and ruin my, well, I don't know, we're gonna find out when we go to court. But what I do know for sure with Phil is that he leveraged opportunities to try to come in and swoop my brand up from up under me. And he did that in the beginning, right? He did that. Like, I'm not, the gloves are off. I'm done. I'm tired. And if he wants to try to accuse me of, um, um, what is it called? Uh, uh, 
making disparaging comments about him, then I'm just going to, you know, show him the receipts like I always do. Like, I got the receipts. It's, I'm not going to risk that with him. Um, but he has consistently, um, consistently, consistently been a very um, disrespectful part of the R&B Divas franchise. And I never really went into it that deep because, well, I had a conversation with Angie. For those of you who watch the, the, the She Speaks Live, I'm representing She Speaks Live with my t-shirt right now today. Um, I had a She Speaks Live with Angie. And Angie um, and I spoke about, you know, the games that the producers were playing internally. And I told her at the time, and I did, and this was from 2018 or something. This was before COVID. This was before the pandemic. Angie and I had this conversation. And I told Angie, I said, Angie, the only thing that has really been a consistent um, thorn in my side and the only thing that just keeps, you know, really making it very difficult for me to get past this R&B Divas experience is Phil Thornton because he just keeps disrespecting me publicly on public platforms. He had one of the most disrespectful conversations that I've ever heard about myself on the Jasmine brand about how he fired me and he gave me some money out of his check and nobody likes me and I'm the whole reason why R&B Divas went away. And then at the beginning of the franchise, this article comes out, I'm a tear to work with, they're going to replace me. Phil was at the center of all of that bullshit because he was hired. That is the word, hired, H I R E. D hired by Faith and I before anybody before he had a conversation with a TV one a think factory or anybody he was hired by Faith and I I agreed to allow Phil to become a part of this R&B Divas situation because I felt like he would be somebody who would really look out for us. I felt like he would be somebody who would really make sure that the people we didn't know and the things that we didn't know about television, we'd be protected from being hurt or, or, or um, protected from ultimately what happened, right? Um, we fought for Phil to get like, um, they weren't even gonna give him a headset or let him in Video Village. They was like, who is, what are you doing? We fought for that. Like we stood up for him in the trenches. And I don't talk about things or say things that I can't prove. I'm not going to waste my time putting together all that stuff to show y'all, right? Or maybe if I have to. But these are all facts. This is all the truth. This is all actually what happened. So Phil worked really hard to get me thrown out of the R&B Divas franchise, right? He said horrible, awful things. I remember that there was a, um, when we were in New Orleans doing the Essence Festival, there was a promotion that was being done. It was, you know, Faith and I had this thing worked out in our contract. I don't know if I could, I, well, let me not discuss the contracts because Faith didn't give me permission to do that. And she's my partner and I'm not going to do that part. But long, but although he did, although he was there, oh, he said, oh, Faith was getting way more than Nikki. She got significantly more than Nikki. Like he was just so rude. And he put that out publicly. It's still on YouTube. Y'all can go watch it. Like he dogged me so terribly. Like she's just awful. She's toxic. She just, he just said all these terrible things. And he created this narrative that has followed me for my whole career since R&B Divas. I'm just a woman, like I told Big Jim. I just want to be taken seriously as a businesswoman. I just want to learn how to turn this thing into something really incredible and and really, you know, I didn't I didn't create R&B Divas to hurt nobody. I didn't create R&B Divas to be jealous of Selena. What the fuck? I'm excuse me. There I go. We grown. It's late night. But what the fuck I'm jealous of Selena for? And why would she be jealous of me? We're sisters. We're 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 soul sisters in music. And even if we don't like each other, we could still go get this bread. And that's what I'm about, right? And what was happening is because I am not a very, you ask anybody who knows me, usually, you know, I'm not, with my free time, like my kick it time, I'm with my family. I'm with my husband. I'm with my grandson. I got a new grandbaby on the way. You know, I'm with my dog. Like, I'm, I've always been that way. Even when I was in Brownstone, I'm not party, party, party. I'm not, you know, friendly, friendly, friendly. I'm loyal to a fault. If you need me, I drop everything, right? And, and and show up for you if I love you. But if you're full of shit, I'm going to call you on it. And I realized that Phil was just full of shit, right? And I called him on it. And I expressed it to certain people in the cast. And some of them were like, yeah, I stand in agreement with you. And others were promised opportunities that really never happened for them, right? Because that's how that shit go. They, pr they promise you they're going to give you a show. They promise you they're going to, you know. And, and, and that's what happened. Right. That's that is what happened. People got promised shows and they turned their backs on me. Right. 
And I'm not tripping because I know, like, I can't depend on you like that no more ever, but we can still go get some money. And I think that that is what becomes the problem when you, when you, when people realize that, you know, it's really not personal anymore. Like with the P Valley situation, like I done cried all the tears and, you know, you know, every time I wake up and realize I got a bill from my attorneys that I got to pay, I cry. I'm, I ain't going to hold you up. Cause I'd be like, why well, I gotta go? <laughs> Cause if you had to pay the, the bills that I got to pay, you'd be crying too. This shit is horrible. But when it comes to this R&B Divas thing, it's not personal for me. It's business. All of it. Now, what, what the personal part has already been, you know, has already been resolved. You know, I, the personal part was I wanted to own my shit that I created. And I do now because um, I did the work. And shout out to Michelle, my attorney. I tagged her. Michelle Miller Esquire. Shout out to my soror, the brat. I'm sorry, the brat. I'm tripping. Wow. See, mouth moves and fat, brain moving faster than my mouth. Um, MC Light and shout out to the Brad. Shout out to the Brad and Judy. Congratulations on y'all's new baby. I know we they probably don't like me. I don't not like them, but we just don't communicate. But I wish them the best. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wish them the very best, and I wish that I wish they I I wish them prayers and love, and I hope that they have a very happy, healthy baby. But that's another part. See, Phil was friends with the Brad. Yeah. Phil turned a whole lot of people against me. He turned Lil Mo against me. He, Phil just turned a lot of people against me because he went and told, what's crazy is he went and pretended like he created R&B Divas LA without me. When I reached out to half of those people, when I first reached out to everybody before any of us had a deal with R&B Divas. But though, do y'all know those people didn't even invite me to the premiere of R&B Divas LA? I created the series. And Phil Thornton, Put such toxic, awful, terrible shit into the universe about me. And I did nothing to him except tell him how I really feel. And when people tell me how they really feel, I respect them, even if I don't like what they have to say. I'm just that kind of woman. Even if I don't like what you have to say. I don't like people who lie to me. I don't like people who tell me shit I want to hear just because they want to be my friend. I don't like people who are opportunist. I don't like people who flim flam and flip flop, Monifa. I don't like people like that. I'm so direct going into 53. I'm so straightforward going into 53. After losing so much, I don't have time for it. So to wake up and to hear that Phil Thornton is demanding that the president of TV One hand over the name that Worth Media owns, worthmedia.com, that's where you see it all. And then like going in, I'm never going to bring you anything. You didn't bring him shit. You was a middleman. You were the guy that was just speaking the language that wasn't, well, we thought speaking the language that wasn't so emotional. But, I mean, who does what you did? I would never do that in a million years. As mad as I am at the people who I believe infringed on my intellectual property rights and as much money as I've had to pay these people, these lawyers, to fight these people, I would never, I, don't, I ain't atting people like that. Now I tag their ass and tell them to go to workmedia.com, but I'm not, I just think that's, that's really disrespectful. And um, for people who think that because the executive the response was, what happened was he said, you know, they put a dream list of R&B divas and it was Selena and Monifa and Kiki, who has a show, I believe. And anyway, and I talked to Angie, she's like, I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. He's like, oh, I have the women, I have the women and they're ready to go. But all I need is for TV1 to release the name. And the reason why it's not happening is because TV1 and this executive and named her and added her. Right. And she responded like I call BS number one and you have my number. You could have called me. And this is what I respect about that. Black women are tired of having to always take the high road when people are disrespecting them. People disrespect us and they expect us to be so poised and so pulled up and so Brian McKnight in our delivery. <laughs> I'm sorry. They expect us to be so. Sucked in cheeks and all. 
Um, and they don't give us space to just say, I call bullshit, right? We'll listen to Donald Trump call somebody a nasty woman on TV. And we'll listen to all of these politicians talk mad disrespectful. But the minute a black woman says a cuss word, a him, a ha, rolls her teeth or sucks her neck, she's unprofessional. I'm so glad she got with his ass. I'm so glad she got at his ass. And at the end of the day, here's the deal. You don't put the name of a brand that you don't own, right? You don't go hollering about because McDonald's is never going to serve you cheeseburgers again. If you don't own no golden arches and Phil, you don't own no golden arches. You don't own no R's and you don't own no B's and you don't own no divas. Not in that order. Not R&B divas. You don't own none of that. So it's disrespectful for you to go and have conversations with somebody who you also don't know if I'm already in conversations with said individual about some business. And that's the reason why I'm so pissed, because obviously a little birdie told you that we're having plenty of great conversations with networks about what R&B divas. So I don't know if you're trying to like poison pill the situation. I don't know what it was what you were trying to do, but you didn't have the authority. You're not speaking on behalf of Worth Media. I am. They hired me to do it. Um, so yeah, people have said to me, so this morning I woke up, let me get to some of these messages. So this morning I, I made my, my little, uh, comment yesterday. I'm about to go to the Jasmine brand cause I'm about to get in the comment section. Hey everybody. I knew I was going to get to, um, some questions, but I'm about to get in this, this comment section in the Jasmine brand. There's one person in particularly in particular that I want to address because, um, I like him. I think he's, I, I was watching some of his um, Real Housewives of Atlanta um, commentary. Uh, DJ Richie Sky. I think he's dope. I, I love how he, he does his thing. And he said, hold on, let me find, okay, DJ Richie Sky. Um, he, he always does the, the Housewives things on YouTube. So he said, dear, my beautiful black people, billionaire Michelle Rice, Nikki Gilbert, TV One, Worth Media. As a lover and fan of reality TV, I think it's a testament to the great work you all have done that we are still talking about this show. The ladies of R&B Diva stories are still in unfolding, and what a joy it would be to see those stories continue on our screens. Hopefully, there can be some peaceful re resolution so the fans can continue to watch the stories of our heroes. I say this with the deepest love. So let me say to you, DJ Richie Scott. I receive that in the spirit of love. I, I'm a big fan, like I said, of your work. And, and let me say this to you and to, to plenty of other people who have said that. I know that I can come off very um, direct and very like, you know, it. I'm telling you it's in the Detroit tone. Like, can you be talking the same way? Certain people from Detroit, we're very hard on them T's and them S's. And so, you know, see, I just, you know, yeah, we have a very direct, bold, is Chicago the same way? Right, Chicago same way. Southern people, real sweet, kind of with they with they shade and what they get in your ass. You know, country folks got a, a different way about them. But us Detroit people and Chicago people, we talk hard, and we have. So I'm gonna try to soften this up because I sincerely want this to come from the most loving place ever. Let me say this first of all to fans of R&B divas, as um, you know, you know, the creator of the franchise and somebody who, um, thank you, Chris. The creator of the franchise and somebody who is truly, truly, truly from the bottom of my heart grateful for the platform that R&B Divas has provided over the years, you know, for me to learn and to grow. Now, if you asked me this question a few years ago, I would be like, hell no, to the no, 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 hell to the no, hell to the no, to the no, 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 but God is good. And perspectives change and we grow and we become better versions of ourselves if we're lucky. And I realized that, you know, a lot of the stuff I was concerned about on the show, um, shit, ain't nothing compared to what goes on in the streets now, you know? But um, I also realized that it was an amazing franchise. It had an amazing fan base full of um, a lot of really talented women who deserve the opportunity to share with people who have been fans of our music and supported our music for so many years. And that's why we created it. That's why we all put the work in. And I know I talk about me being an owner and I talk about me being the creator, 
But the show would not be what the show is without every single solitary person, every diva, every TV executive, and even Phil Thornton, right? But where I have just come to a place, Richie, and all the other people who are like, can we all just get along and work together? Um, if, and let me say this, and the reason why people are probably saying this now, turn this a little bit. So the reason why people are probably saying this now is because Phil posted after learning that Worth Media owns. Matter of fact, let me tag Worth Media because I need y'all to follow Worth. We need we need some followers. Hold on. We got an Instagram page and everything. Hold on. Pin. Okay. So, um, I'm talking to Richie and, and y'all and fans of the show. So, the reason I can't go forward with Phil Thornton in this franchise is because as much as everybody was a part of the success of the franchise of R&B Divas by sharing their stories and their voices and their gifts, especially the, the starting five, the original five, right? The one person, the one individual, the one person who wasn't an R&B singer, who wasn't a network production executive, who was not someone who worked for Think Factory Media, which was the production company that produced the show, was Phil Thornton. Phil Thornton was the person who was the, the manager of Faith Evans at the time that we brought in to protect us from him, from what turned out to be him. So the difference between letting bygone, I will work. Adam Fishman and Phil Thornton are the only two people connected to the R&B Divas franchise that if what that that it will, there will be a clause written into the agreement that we will never work with those two men again. That's it. I'm saying it right here. He will never have a future. Him or Aaron Fishman will never have a future with R and B Divas franchise as long as I own it. And 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 that's just business because those are two people who in my opinion, ruined the relationships of so many amazingly talented singers and, and, and women who were friends and who loved each other and who had each other's back. Now, mind you, we all have to agree to be pawns in the game. But when you bring somebody on board and that person is supposed to be there to make sure we're protected from all of it and to single me out, he singled me out so many times as the person who was the whole complete reason for everything that happened with R&B Divas. Phil Thornton's impact on my life and career on R&B Divas is the reason why when I had this lawsuit going with P-Valley, so many people did not, in the beginning, so many people didn't support me because they just were like, you terrible, you awful, you da 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 we don't like you. You're, just, just, you're always a troublemaker. Da, da, da. And that was the narrative that he was painting. And every, you know, funky Deneva and all these people who were just ripping me to shreds on a regular basis. Phil, I don't talk to so many people. And trust me, I know the things that you have said about me, my personal shit, all kinds of things that you said to the wrong people because they've, I, I got all the receipts. And I'm not going to get out here and beat a dead horse. I just want people who think that I'm just being mean or inconsiderate or, or not working together with the whole team to know that the reason I'm never going to work with Phil Thornton is because he treated me so terribly at the lowest point of my life. When I was broken, when I didn't have nothing, when I got evicted, lost my house, when I lost everything I had, when they weren't paying me for two years, he running around gallivanting. With, I had two franchises of R&B divas and Hollywood divas, which Think Factory and I believe Phil and Paul got executive producer credit on. And I had to go to court and I had to fight. He wasn't even named in a lawsuit. 
Well, nobody thinking about Phil. He had no power. And Phil wasn't the wizard. The wizard, I coined the phrase, and I was talking about Think Factory, Aaron Fishman. That's why he's the other person that I'll never deal with. And that's just a personal opinion. I'm not saying nothing about the man's work abilities because maybe he's doing great wherever the hell he is. Those are just people I'm not going to have here. And that's just because God gives us these lessons and these opportunities to do things better and doing it better requires no fill. Period. And ain't no apology and ain't no I'll work with Nikki and Faith. No, you aren't. No, you won't. Because guess what? You weren't going to until you found out that I own the franchise. You was moving and grooving. Talking to cast members. I don't know who you've been talking to. Now I reached out to the ones you named. And I'm still waiting, hopefully. Listen, I've extended an invitation for all of the divas to be a part of the show. So y'all be clear. All of the women are welcome to be a part of this new season. And we're going to do great deals with everybody. And it's going to be great opportunities for this thing to fly. And R&B divas is going to be bigger and better than ever. But it will not include Phil Thornton. And... Anybody who wants to work with him, have at it. Go for it. Because maybe you won't end up catching a lawsuit because you're trying to infringe on my idea by creating another version of the show. But maybe you will. And I'm not, and that and that and that's not about me being nasty. You guys, people misconstrue just handling your shit and handling your business as just being nasty and being a bitch. And I am just going to have to be that these days because I'm not running from a person's opinion of how I am learning to be a better businesswoman and I'm exercising those lessons. Um, I'm just, I'm just not, I'm just getting kind of right at people. So everybody has my opinion and you can take the little clips and you go, Oh, it goes in on field. That's not even what it's about. I'm just telling the truth about somebody I'm never going to deal with ever in life and I've just and I've made it clear like a, a gazillion times that people keep tagging me and I've had friends reaching out to me like that's cold well you know would you consider it because he said he said he said he didn't say nothing I'm trying to get to this fan y'all I'm having a private summer hold on bear with me he this man did not say anything about including me in anything until he realized that he couldn't do it without me. Then all of a sudden, what's going on here? Okay. Now I gotta turn the fan on. Whew, she doing too much, ain't she? Yes, Jesus. Baby, turn it 53. Give me some hearts if you know what I'm feeling. Y'all young. Y'all have no idea. Um. So, yeah, I'm just in a season of, of just saying what I have to say about who I have to say it about and just doing it in a way so there ain't no guessing about it. Like, I, I've been trying to be like, um, I see them hearts. I see them ladies having private summers. I see y'all. You see, who she's getting dewy. Ciao. Lord. Ooh, baby. I think it's because I'm holding this damn phone. Let me put it up. Hold on. I think I got enough juice to put it back on the gimbal. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I'm just not doing that no more, guys. I'm just, I'm just not in the. Um, mm mm. Mm mm. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, we're back. My hands are free. Um, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not gonna do it no more. I'm just not um, pretending like I like people that I don't like or that I'm gonna work with people that I'm not gonna work with. Phil Thornton is. I'm just not gonna work with him. So I hope you guys who are fans of the show. I mean, and, and I know that there are people probably in the industry who really cool with Phil and they probably feel like, well, you know, I can't F with Nikki because I rock with Phil. I get it. Like that's loyalty. Great. Like I really appreciate people who are honest and loyal and like, you know, that's how I would want my friends to ride. I would want my friends to be like, listen, if you're not in it, I'm not in it. And that's cool because guess what? The exciting thing about this new version of R&B Divas is that we're going to open this thing up to um, to a lot of new faces. Um, and, and again, all the older faces or the familiar faces and the veteran faces are definitely welcome. You guys don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that because Phil named you as somebody who's willing to be a part of his team. That means that you can't be a part of this one. I just want you to know that I'm not dealing with Phil. It's like the PSA. Not. Because he don't like me. And 
he was a big part of the reason why a lot of y'all, not y'all, because y'all are here, um, a lot of people didn't like me. And he's never apologized to me. And it's not like he did all of this stuff like back in the day and then um, never mentioned my name after that. This man puts my name in so much stuff that he doesn't even know that I know about with so many people that I deal with that he doesn't even know that I deal with that are like, I don't agree with the things that he says. So I want you to be clear. That's not your friend. And I'm like, no, I'm clear. He's not my friend. And I'm clear. He's not going to ever be a part of the R&B Divas franchise again. So there's that. Um, we've already started talking to some really amazing, incredible producers that are coming on board to really help us take it to the next level. You know, I'm sorry for those of you who are disappointed because you really wanted to see Phil um, be a part of this, this franchise and a part of this show. It's never, ever, never, ever going to happen. Right. I can say never in this situation because you know what? This is the thing about when you when you at rock bottom and people kick you when you're down. And then they realize that you're coming up and then they decide they want to be your friend. That's what I mean when I said about Frank Ski and Nina Brown showing up for me. And 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 the Shade Room has even shown up for me. And the Jasmine brand consistently. And by showing up for me, I'm not saying that they like doing favors for me or no shit like that. But just getting my story out there, right? I don't expect anybody to do anything but say what it is. What you see, what has been filed in the court, what is public information. And I'm so grateful for people who have done that. And it's crazy to me because... People will wait to see which who's and, and if you're a business person and a numbers person and somebody I'm about to get like, uh, I don't know, um, you know, a first round of an investment for our TV streaming app platform. I can understand you waiting kind of to see kind of how the situation goes before you invest your financial resources into me and my case and what I'm doing and, and not want to be a part of that because it's messy. I totally understand that. And that's part of the reason why I really did not want to get involved in a lot of business prospects part of the reason why i wasn't pushing the r&b divas ball too hard because i knew you know we were coming up on this situation where we were going to be in court you know for r&b i mean for um p valley so i wasn't pushing too hard over there and it's like people just like oh you know decided that they were gonna you know yeah don't don't be shocked about phil thornton phil thornton has been doing that for a very very long time phil thornton has been disrespecting me in particular, like he's always going in on me, always, always going in on me. A ask him about that video. Him and his friend set up on a podcast and did the did the video, and she's just she, she, and just ate me up with Celine. They always he always ate me up, always. And I don't even be talking about this man until he says something out of order connected to either me or one of my businesses. And the reason why I'm showing him my fangs today is because he thinks I'm playing games with him. I'm, this right here wasn't in my head when we met. It is today. It's here for a reason. I've learned a lot. I have a lot more wisdom. I have a lot more knowledge. That is the reason why you didn't know that I own the franchise. Or not I own. I got to stop saying that because I don't. Worth Media owns the franchise. You didn't know that. And you didn't know that because you're so busy going off on people and disrespecting people and disparaging people that you don't take the time to handle the business that will prevent you from being publicly humiliated the way that you probably are right now because you tried to publicly humiliate the president of the network that is responsible for the success of R&B Divas. How are you going to just go off on the people that's the reason why you can run around here telling people that you did some shit you really didn't do. Like, at least respect the people that have allowed you to go around and pretend like it was your show. That's my show. It's my show. I did it. It's my show. It's my show. You said that. I got all the video. I got every tweet. Listen, I got the tweets. I got the YouTube videos. I got the conversations that you didn't even know that I heard about the horrible shit that you have said about me. The things that are illegal, actually, for you to say. And I'm not just talking about R&B divas. I'm talking about my personal shit that you have just complete. It's just really disrespectful. And I caution anybody. I'm just going to say it. And, and y'all can say. Okay, you can ask a question off topic. Yes. Y'all can say um, whatever you want to say about it. But if you allow Phil Thornton 
to come into your life and your career. Understand that you're dealing with somebody who, when they decide that they don't like you no more, they're going to do what they did to me, what they did to the president of a TV network, which is just go off and be mad disrespectful and make a whole bunch of false claims that aren't real. And then to cover up for doing that, right? It's just, it's just, it's a liability. That's what, that's the, that's the word that we use. He's a liability. He's a liability. Nobody has the right to talk about something that they don't own as if they do. Number one, Phil, Katori, anybody else. Um, and you really should never talk to a network executive the way that Phil Thornton talked to the head, the president of TV one, putting the R&B divas brand at risk. That's why this is a big conversation for me because you put my business at risk. All right, let me answer some of these questions and stop talking so damn much. Um, how do you feel about the whole Writers Guild strike going on in Los Angeles right now? Okay, right. Thank you. Reset. I think the Writers Guild strike in Los Angeles is a freaking amazing. I love it. 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 And the reason why I love it is because um, I've been <laughs> I've been talking about how unfair and how uh, egregious and how disrespectful these contracts have been for creatives for such a long time. And unfortunately, black people don't have what well, we maybe do in some in some rooms and in some spaces. But it's not often that black people have the opportunities to have unions back them and support them in a cause, um, especially black creatives. Right. And it's just great to see that there, you know, sag after which I'm sag after health care and all that other stuff. You know, I'm a union person for sure in that regard. Um it's just great to see that you have a machine that is influential and powerful enough to really amplify the voices of creatives and underserved individuals and really speak truth to power. Networks have so much power. Record companies have so much power. They have so much um, money and influence and resources, right? And often we, the little people, the creatives, are just used for our resources and discarded, right? Thanks, appreciate you, goodbye. And when we see Tyler Perry, who has ownership of his content, when we see Byron Allen, who has ownership of his content, and some other folks who have ownership of their of their content and the things that they create, writers, you know, aspire to have that kind of thing for themselves as well. You know, we want to make sure that our kids have college funds. We want to make sure that, you know, when we're 50. 60, 70, 80 years old, we're watching reruns of the things that we created that at least we can pay our light bill, pay our, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing more humiliating than walking in a store. I remember this happened to me. It was one of them, you know, we, as creators, we have ebb and flow. It was one of them ebb times. Um, and I remember being in a store and like budgeting, like trying to figure out how, like trying to figure out, okay, I'm like, I got $75, let me figure out, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like trying to figure out how to make, you know, make it work. Like a normal everyday person who ain't got enough money. And this was, you know, before I was married. And um, I mean, shit, we didn't have hard times while we was married, shit. But this was before I was married and the song came on in the grocery store. And I just remember thinking to myself, I'm in a grocery store trying to figure out how to pay for my groceries. Uh-oh, y'all. That was a, um, hope the power ain't about to go out. Let me tell the story. I'm in a grocery store trying to figure out how to pay for my groceries, and I, my song is on the radio. Like, my, my people are shopping and listening to my song, and I'm shopping and counting my money trying to figure out how to eat. And that's the experience for so many creatives, Right. Um, it's no feeling like your lights getting cut off and you having to use candles and stuff and, and like, you know, the person coming back to turn your lights on, like, wait, ain't you, you know what I'm saying? So I say that to say, and, and, that, and I'm not saying that to say that just because we're celebrities that we shouldn't have to go through stuff that real basic, regular, normal people go through. Cause we basic, normal, regular people too. But it's just to his different and it hurts a little bit more when you realize that, you know, um, 
what you created, what you've done is like making people money. Like somebody's getting money for that. But I saw him playing in the grocery store, right? Somebody's getting money for like, and the fact that we aren't um, and we're struggling and a lot of us, you know, writers, either songwriters or script writers or whatever, you know, like I, somebody was like, you know, I live in a house with five other writers and we're all writing on his shows. Like that is, like, that's crazy to me. It's crazy. You live in a house in LA with five other writers and all five of y'all are working on hit shows that are making networks billions of dollars and y'all living together, five of y'all at a house. And I'm not shaming them because shit, I've done it. Don't, don't let me tell you my stories about going to Taco Bell telling them they forgot to give me a taco just so me and my friend Dwayne could both eat and would have to share one 49 cent taco. Stop playing. It is terrible out there. And when you think about how much work you put into your art and how aspirational it can be for other people and how you don't get paid the value of it. You want to see people out in the streets saying no Roger, no rerun, no rent. And I hope like Prince, I mean not Prince, like um, Snoop said, I hope that what ends up ultimately happening is I hope that the music industry, let me say this. I got to say this. Okay. Got to say this. This is what happened when y'all talk to an old chick who been in the industry for almost 30 years, who got a lot of shit to say, and she long-winded. Um, she is, I, I am her. So my clip, um, where I talk about the fact that Brownstone still owes Sony a million dollars, right? I'm explaining real quick how that works. And then I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have responded to that clip by saying, well, why didn't you have a lawyer? Well, why didn't you, you know, read your contract? You was 23, but you could read and da -da 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 -da, you know, like going off, right? <laughs> As if, right? Um, but how it works is in the 90s, we all signed pretty much the same contracts, guys. We all signed, and, and I'm not speaking for everybody, so you know, you got to just watch every single solitary word you say these days. Y'all know what I mean. I don't mean we literally signed the same contracts. I'm saying contracts were fairly um what do you call it? A format or, you know, everybody pretty much got similar deals. So if I did get a lawyer, right. And by the way, my lawyer, my accountant, my manager were all chosen by my record people. Like literally it was just like, oh, okay, this is such and such. And he works with such and such. And he was, Cause you know, and I get why they kind of did it because you know, well, actually I don't now in hindsight, but I understand the reasoning at the time may have been that, you know, when people are used to working together and people are familiar with one another, things run more smoothly and it's not a whole bunch of whatever, but then there's a whole nother opportunity there when that happens. Right. And I'm not suggesting that that happened because I thought that these people were great people. I don't have a problem with any of them um, because I can't point the finger and say, this is the person who did this, or this is the person that did that because we all did sort of the same deals. It was a standard. But what I will say to people who keep saying, well, you were grown, you were 20-something years old, and you were such and such and such and such. Listen, baby, listen. Let me tell you this. This is the other part of the story that you didn't get in the clip. And first of all, you guys are watching a clip. Shout out to my brother, Beehive. My husband told me today, shout out Beehive. My husband was like, you got to do a Beehive interview. You got to do a Beehive interview. And Beehive is one of those people. Angela Stanton, say what you want to say about Angela. All those people who had me on their platforms to talk about my lawsuit before I win this mug in a, in a, in a short period of time. Shout out to all of y'all. We coming back. We celebrating the winnings and all that other stuff. So get it, your girl. But anyway, Beehive did an interview. I was super transparent. I talked about all of it. So watch the whole thing and, and, and don't do the fake news thing by judging. What is it? You read the headline and not the story. We do that a lot. Read the headlines. We don't read the story. Um, but I say to those people who say to me, you shouldn't have signed that contract. You should have known better. What was I going to do? I'm 23 years old. I done dropped out of college and used my Pell Grant money to move to L.A. and sleep on couches and be homeless for a minute and go to Taco Bell and say, I think you forgot to give me an extra taco. And hustle and go through the humiliation of being a big bald headed girl and, and go through the humiliation of like people being like, nah, she too big. She can sing, but I want to go through that whole process. And then knock, knock, knock. I end up at Michael Jackson's door. I end up at Michael Jackson's door and they give me a contract and I say, I'm 23. 
this what this what y'all want me to do. All these people on this post that are saying yeah, yeah, yeah contract. Um, can you take out that clause that said the points for such and such? Like, who at 23 years old? And my dad said, oh, if you see perpetuity, babe, don't sign the contract. Daddy, it's Michael Jackson. And to be clear, Michael Jackson didn't give me a bad contract. The, the contracts were just what they were. So I could have, yes, you're absolutely right. All you smart accounting people and lawyer people and all that other stuff. I could have said, you know, I'm not signing this below it's beneath me i'm gonna go back to detroit and work at the plant i'm not doing it i don't care if it is michael jackson and sony and all them people this contract isn't fair this fifty thousand dollar advance ain't shit i don't know how i'm gonna get my money on the back end i'm 23 years old my name is nikki gilbert and i'm nobody today but i'm gonna go back home and work at the plant and wait till somebody comes and gives me a better contract than michael jackson i'm not signing this shit is that what that was? Was that what I was supposed to do? Somebody, please tell me. Was I supposed to decline my record contract with Michael Jackson because it was unfair? Perhaps in another world, yes. But I was 23 years old, super excited about the possibility of all the things that signing with Michael Jackson would mean, and um, I felt like, you know what, I'm going to become famous and I'm not, and none of this is going to matter and they're going to give us an even bigger. I was just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and full of hope and aspiration, and I signed it. And the beautiful thing about having gone through all of the horrible shit that I've gone through in this industry, the ebb, the flows, the highs, the lows, all the things that you guys were really supposed to find out on R&B Divas and not this crazy shit that Phil Thornton perpetuated, but all the real shit, um... I'm sorry, guys, if you're religious or spiritual, and I'm, I'm using a lot of profanity, I do apologize, but I cuss a lot. Um, instead, I signed the deal. I signed the deal, and I, I, I had a, a fantastic ride at times. I had a horrible ride at times. But what I did was I built a story, and I kept going, and I kept hustling. And if you, most of y'all don't even know how I got my deal with Michael Jackson. Like Just getting there, the whole process was just so much... So, no, I wasn't going to turn the contract down. And I wasn't going to change the music industry at 23 years old by turning down a contract that was subpar. I was going to make the most of it. And by the grace of God, I'm here at 53 and I have the opportunity to share my story with people I love that I don't even know because they're my people. Because we can relate to so much of the same stuff and we come from so many of the same places, right? So I, I, I know, I accept that God put me in this situation where things don't always go exactly the way that I hope or that I plan so that I can be brought to my knees so that I can pay attention to the most important aspect of this career of mine, which is to share the things that I've learned, to share my gift, to be transparent about what it really is, right? We have to go through things, horrible things, terrible things, to, to discover what we're made of, to find out how much we can handle, to find out what our reaction or proactive response to all the things, the trials and the tribulations. And we have to change our perspectives on what it is. See, back in the day, being famous was really exciting because we saw really incredibly talented Prince Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, like we was on that Luther, you know what, I, I can't go to work, I don't want nobody else to ever love me, you are my shining star, my guiding light, my love fantasy, there's not a minute, hour, day, or night that I don't love you, you're at the top of my list, cause I'm always thinking of you, I still remember it, alright, all right, stop, 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 but that's where we was at, we was at practice, in the Luther, we was at singing our little songs. We was at we was gonna be famous to go buy our mama house. We were so super excited about the possibilities that fame and fortune will offer us as young, impressionable black people. That was our way out the hood, and many of us discovered that it was just our way into a, a, a bigger box, right? And for those of us who are in position. Ooh, this is a long ass laugh. I got, oh my God, I just looked at the time. Um, for those of us who are in position, 
to uh, really be honest and transparent about our experiences, right? And 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 every time I go live and I go on YouTube and I, I do these rants and I share my shit. This is a historical document, baby. This is what the shit. This is the thing that the girl gonna go back when she in a copyright infringement lawsuit and she gonna be like, "This what Nikki said. And this what Nikki did." And the days of like not telling people shit that's going on with you, those days are over. They're not, it's just not, it's just not, it's just don't, none, none of it makes sense. It doesn't make sense for us to live in a world where we can't be transparent about the struggle. It don't make no sense for us to live in a world where we can't just tell people how we feel and, and what we need and what we expect, right? We cannot live in a world where we feel like we have to be pulled up and poised and together all the time, right? Where we don't show our um, vulnerability and our brokenness. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we can't live in that kind of world because then what we do is we perpetuate this image and this narrative and this stereotype that ended up killing Whitney Houston. It ended up killing Michael Jackson. And ended up killing Prince because we start to suffer inside and, and ended up killing DJ Twitch and ended up killing Robin Williams and ended up killing Phyllis Hyman and ended up killing. We, we live in this crazy ass world where everybody wants us to pre pretend like shit is OK. And everything is good. And then you hold it in and you implode and, and you ruin your life. And you ruin your life because you don't want people to see you as someone who is ruining your life or someone who is weak or someone who is vulnerable. Listen, the reason why I don't give, I love y'all. I love y'all. Well, some of y'all. Most of y'all. But I don't care about the negative, toxic, awful things that you say about me. Because A, I can just clear it up and be like, that's some bullshit and ain't true. This is what it really is. But because B, I, I went through a very long, hard, uh, difficult journey of, of, of loving myself and accepting myself and um, understanding that we are all weak sometimes. We are all very strong sometimes. We are all happy sometimes. We are all extremely sad sometimes. Like nobody on this planet, like no human being that's real actual human and not a robot. Brian McKnight be acting like one sometimes. The way he delivered that message was very robotic. But um, nobody is just without um, emotion and, and feeling, right? If you're human. And I don't put that much weight on what people say about me where it impacts how I feel about myself. I had to really come to a place of really learning how to love myself. People, why are you talking about the Whitney Houston situation on Dr. Drew? Why are you on TV talking about the party that you was at where you saw everything that happened and everything that went down and you wanted to justify it, but you shouldn't have been on there justifying it? Why was you... Because I love Whitney Houston, because I love my, my people in, in the industry, because I'm an advocate for women and girls, because I believe it's important for us to know what really actually happened as opposed to the salacious bullshit that people put out there just to drive numbers and shit. Like we're so caught up in CNN and CNN just let Donald Trump just get on national TV and like disrespect women like it ain't no big deal. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why, why do we put so much trust in other people and not in God and in ourselves? And I put my trust in those who love me. I put my trust in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I put my trust in um, the knowledge that if I just tell you what it is, even if it changes later, right? Even if my idea of the thing changes later, what I'm telling you in the moment is an authentic, real feeling or reaction. And because I know that I've lived my entire life helping people, I don't have, I'm just not built like that. I don't try to hurt nobody. I don't try to cheat nobody. I'm not a cheat. I don't take credit for people's shit. I don't steal shit from people. I don't always do all the things I'm supposed to do. I procrastinate. I, just, I get places late a lot of times. I go over budget with shit. Like, it's all kind of, I cuss. I don't always eat healthy. It's a lot of things that I don't do. It's a lot of things that I am not. But one thing I am, 
And anybody who knows me, who not beefing with me at the time because they mad because they couldn't, you know, I, I'm hip to their bullshit and I'm not doing it no more. Um, I'm a really genuine person when it comes to wanting to see everybody win. I swear on everything. I'm a person who wants to see everybody succeed. I want to see everybody win. The fact that I have empathy and understanding for the cast of P Valley, right? And, and those who were not involved in the infringement, you know, should say enough. I'm not out here to like stop nobody bag. I'm not out here to like stop. I know the girl Brandy who I think is beautiful and talented. I know she's taking care of her mom. I took care of my mom for like four years. Like my mom from Army Divas, my mother was sick. If y'all saw that, my mother had been sick since back then. People don't know that, but you know, I was a caregiver for my mother. I watched my mother die twice. My mother literally died. I didn't, the first time they were sending her up to rehab. She was doing fine. We was like, oh, doctor, it was the one day. I missed two days while my mother's in the hospital for almost 120 days. Some shit like that. I missed two days. And the one day, other day that I missed, we it was Braylon's birthday. And I was like, I'm going to run to Orlando. I'm going to take mama. I'm going to take Braylon to uh, Disney. You know, doctors are moving her to physical therapy. You know what I'm saying? She had a stroke, a massive stroke. Doctors moving her to physical therapy. When I left, I talked to the doctor. I was like, listen, is everything good? They're like, no, no, no. I'm over. She, you know, my mother couldn't speak, right? She lost her ability to speak. Um, stroke was terrible. She died. Yeah. It was terrible. Um, I went up in the room to get her plate after cooking her dinner, and she was in the middle of it. And I'll never forget it. I, I thought she was gone. But, um... I went and took Braylon, my grandson, to Disney World. We landed in Orlando. The doctor called me. I need to talk to you right away. I need to talk to you right away. Your mother coded. I'm like, mother coded? What are you talking about? And they're like, oh, we accidentally. They didn't say accidentally. What they said was they they did not know that she had been, um, she went through dialysis. They didn't know that she had done dialysis the day before. My mother was 80 pounds when she died, like under 80 pounds. So they sent her through dialysis a second time and she died she had a do not resuscitate and they broke my mother's ribs resuscitating her and my mother was in ICU we flew back and it took her another 40 days or something like that to die dramatic terrible I know but from that I went into a lawsuit with P Valley. Oh, and my dad died after that. Okay, my dad died 90 days after that. And then, you know, he just had a stroke. Died. Shock of my life. Um, at least he was with his girlfriend. Daddy, I'm sorry. Um, and then I went into the pandemic, and then, I went, and then we went into the lawsuit. So I say all that to say I empathize with Brandy David. I mean, I keep calling her Brandy Davis. I can't think of her last name right now, and that's no disrespect. But I empathize with these actors. I empathize with these people because I can relate to what it means to have to take care of your loved ones. I can relate to what it means to get that big break. I saw the guy Nico talking about, I was plus size and nobody wanted to. I know what that means. I lived that life as Brownstone, the big girl. I get it. I'm not trying to hurt y'all. But those people gave Katori Hall $100 million for a story I wrote in 2004. A story that is exactly the same as the story I wrote in 2004. I stand corrected. So I just feel that the right thing to do is to handle your business. And and the biggest part of this, and this is the thing I like want a lot of people, because somebody, one of my friends called me and was like, yeah, I heard, you know, that the people were trying to, you know, be reasonable with you, which is some bull crap, because, you know, I can't even disclose what the original conversation was looking like but it was laughable it was like i'm a crackhead or something and i'm like huh so uh it was very it was terrible it was terrible like it was disgusting what these people said you know they felt the value at the time was to make this thing go away it was insulting and it was disrespectful and it was just a very clear example of how they look at black people in this industry. What works for hire. But the difference is that I'm not a person who does work for hire work anymore. I did it with R&B Divas. And I learned the lesson. And Shaquem from Flavor Unit and Latifah said. Not Shaquem. Well, before Shaquem and Latifah was a person who I won't name. But 
my angel um, was like, you have to own it, Nikki. You have everything moving forward down the line. That's why we're in this R&B Divas conversation. And that's why I'm so adamant about Phil Thornton not touching shit. Um, because this man who's like a fairy godfather, who was very, very powerful and quiet and wealthy and, you know, amazing and incredible. But, you know, he ain't one of the people. Like, now, when I say that, he ain't like, hey, can I borrow some money? Because hell no. That's why he is the way he is. It ain't going down like that. He invests in content and stories and all kinds of stuff. And he's invested in some of the greatest content and greatest stories ever. But he, too, is like, hey, let me see where the smoke clear with this shit you got going on over here before I go over there. Which is another reason why it's so important, you know, for you guys to realize my business and my um, opportunities are inf affected and impacted by this case as well. I'm not just skating through this mug like it's easy because it's not. But um, so I've learned from my conversations with Arthur and my conversations with Shaquem, my conversations with... I'm sorry if I brought him into this conversation um, because really he ain't got nothing to do with it outside of this story. But it was about ownership, right? And it was the same year that I went in and I talked to the P-Valley people. And that's why I'm always talking about ownership, you guys. I've been talking about ownership at least since 2013 when I realized that because I did not have ownership of R&B Divas, I didn't have power. I had no power. I don't want to be famous no more like that if it's not connected to ownership and real wealth and generational wealth. I don't want to be... People, what if they let you on the show? What if they give you a role on the show? Yeah, not interested. Not at all. Not at all. Not interested because I've been on stage my whole life. I've heard the applause. I know, you know, people who haven't think that it's something really special. But really, it, it is special. Let me say this. It's very special when people appreciate your gift. And people patronize your business, which is your whole thing. I'm going into two hours now. I'm tripping. Um, it's very, very special when that happens. But what we cannot lose sight of is when the music stops, as we start to get older, as we start to become moms, as we start to become grandparents, as we start to become arthritic, that arthritis, artha, get to kicking in, uh, older, just maturing, we start to realize that we need something more tangible than just fame. We need something more, um, something that's going to stick to the ribs and help pay the bills and help us retire. And help us live meaningful lives. And that's what the writers want. That's what the singers that wrote the songs that do billions of streams want. That's what the rappers that rap the songs that want billions of streams. We want you to start treating us like partners. Right? When I went in to pitch to the head of Lionsgate, he knows that I pitched him ownership. He knows that I came and I said, hey, listen, the same people who work with Tyler Perry are working with me. And they're prepared to do the same thing. And that was a time when you could bring something and have it licensed, right? And that is the reason why I did From the Bottom Up series with BET. I did that same deal with BET and Shaquem the same year because I learned through R&B Divas that if I don't own it, I cannot be in control of the end result. And more important than that, and it's really not just even about being in control of the end result. What it is about is understanding that if our narrative in our community, ooh, it's one o'clock, I'm sorry, if our narrative in our community is going to change, if we're going to be in a situation where we are able to leave something to our future generations, if we're going to be in a situation where we can start telling stories about how resilient we are, about how dope we are, when we can start having more stories where we see the real contributions that we've made to this country and how, how dope we've been in the process of building it and not just everything being so rooted in trauma and grief and pain. You guys, there's something called agitated propaganda. There's, there's so many things that these people put into the cipher, into the universe, into the uh, metaverse that are killing our people every single day. They so toxic and so destructive if it's not drugs, liquor, we see liquor everywhere. It's a liquor store in every corner. You know, those are all my alternate substances. Those are all mo things that we do or engage in to detach from our realities as opposed to figuring out collectively how we can make our realities better, like real time in the real world. And I learned that the way that I can help my community thrive, I've learned that the way that I can make my community better, right, is to have ownership of the content that I create, 
so that it provides me the opportunity to reinvest in better stories and more stories and more opportunities. So it provides me the opportunity. I have so many nieces and nephews that are doing so great. They are nurses. They are um, marketing executives. They are just so smart and they're doing so great. But they're struggling because they're young and they're like trying to figure it out and they're trying to pay for college. And like occasionally I got a a nephew who's got like a 5.9. That ain't even real. But the highest grade point average ever. You know, and when he hits me and he's like, Auntie, I don't want to bother you, but like, um, you know, my meal plan got canceled. And I'm like, your meal plan got canceled. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I got to decide whether or not, you know, I'm going to pay $15,000 to a lawyer or help my nephew pay for his meal plan so he can stay in college and not go home so he can eat. It pisses me off, Katori Hall, Lions, Gay, P Valley Stars, because here are young black people, young black kids who have family members who, who want to see to it that they're able to thrive and become, you know, um, very uh, um, successful, um, well-adjusted people in our community. But if the people that they lean on and want to count on are struggling because people are selfish and greedy and inconsiderate of, of what they contributed to their wealth and their bottom line, and they don't care about their real lives and their real families and their real shit. Like, that's how we make the world a better place. Artists aren't trying to just raise a bunch of artists. Most artists don't even want their kids to be artists. Like, I'm like, don't do it. Whatever the hell you do. Like, if you got a really talented niece, a nephew, a cousin that really want to do this shit, put them through every possible test there is to make sure they actually really want to do it before you encourage them to do it. Because this business is the most toxic, awful, corrupt, bottom-dwelling, evil ass business and i'm sorry it just is and and and, and listen there's a lot of people gonna be like you ain't gonna never work in that we got a plan for that and if i gotta work in a business where i can't tell you exactly what it is and the truth about it not everybody in the entertainment industry is that way but the vast majority of companies and businesses that make money off of monetizing gifts of gift ta- uh the gifts of talented people they give you very one-sided um, uh, contracts and agreements, and they know the desperation will lead to you ultimately signing it. And that is why um, I'm so adamant about fighting this thing for as long as I have to, because I know that whatever I receive, because I will be on the receiving end of this in a very positive, good way, that I am going to reinvest and I'm not, somebody asked if I was reading comments. I'm, I'm actually not, because I saw a couple of silly ones, and I'm sorry, I can't, um, I ain't got time today. Um, I'm reading some of them, so I read that one. But we want to reinvest in our community. We want to reinvest in opportunities for black people to build wealth, and we don't necessarily, we're not looking for this to be a situation where we're just always in the entertainment industry. We want to build our other businesses. We want to build our other brands. We want to create other opportunities for the people we love and people we care about. And um, that's important. So hopefully you guys got something from this long two hour and two minute live. Um, I hope y'all ain't too distracted by me looking at all these different screens I have going on in here. Let me look real quick at um, what's happening out here in the universe. Uh, What's up, LinkedIn? Y'all are still there. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Let's see, is my Facebook people there? Hey, Facebook family. I see y'all. I see y'all. IG, I see y'all too. Yeah, they're here, they're here, they're here, they're here. I love it, I love it, I love it. And YouTube is here. So, yeah, guys, um... I just wanted to share. I just wanted to open up. I wanted to share. I'm just at a place where I just, you know, uh uh-oh, what's going on here? Don't do it. Everyone on IG or TikTok wants their child to be discovered. Yes, and that's the thing. And that's the reason. That's another reason why I'm so transparent because we just keep pretending like this shit is okay and it's not. It's not. It's not. (coughs) We have readjusted So many things because of the world advancing, right? Nobody's listening to CDs anymore. You know, nobody, people, you know, it's just so so many things. Like, you don't have to cut 
um, onions and bell peppers no more. You can throw the shit in a, you know what I'm saying? So many things have evolved, right? To make life easier. Like, you know, snail mail just, you know, and people ain't just really mailing letters. It's just like, boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh, I didn't do that. I don't know what I just did. Um, why can't the, why can't the Writers Guild get what they need because the world has changed and grown and advanced? Why can't artists, recording artists, get what they need because the world has changed and advanced? Why can't creatives be a part of the evolution of the way that, you know, content is delivered and disseminated? Why can't we receive a fair share of the things that we create that create so much joy for so many people? Why are we not allowed to um, feed our families in a, in a healthy, reasonable way? Um, and that's why we're, we're, we're striking. And that's why we are on social media ranting. And that is why we're in the comment section um, saying what the hell we got to say. Because we will not stop. We are an energy we are so much greater than any one of us. We are a collective of people who are tired of being abused by corporate greed. And all we're asking you to do is have a reasonable conversation with us as artists, as creatives, as people who want to give you, we want to work with y'all. That's the whole thing. Like, star, stars, if y'all quit playing, I give you three or four his shows to make the shit work. If, I mean, you know, obviously, contractually, we'll make sure everything is buttoned up properly because I'm not going through that part again. But I don't, it's not personal for me. Like, I'm not like, I'm mad. I want to shut that shit down. I'm, I'm kind of sort of, but not really, though. I want to make money. And I'm, I, I am a, obviously, because, you know, you got a story I created and it's performed quite well for you and you haven't quite been able to figure out how to make that second season. Um, quite as dope as that first season, just because, I mean, let's call it what it is. I didn't write it. Um, I wrote the first one. I didn't write the second one. And that's why it's so different. And there's some great story there. There's some great story there. There's some great places to go. Some great places to go. Some great places to go. If they would just quit playing and run me my loop, give me my, you know, make it do what it do. But because we live in a world where people want to see how far they can go without being fair and amicable, we got to go through this process and y'all got to hear about it more often than you would probably like to, because guess what? I'm not the person who gives up. I'm the person who's going to fight, not just for myself, but for everybody else. Let me look at some of these um, questions, you guys. I've been running my mouth and I was supposed to be answering questions. And I know people out here like mm, she was supposed to be answering questions and you ain't answered too. Um, thank you for the badges that you brought. Um, be careful about wanting your kids to be discovered and wanting your kids to be famous because, you know, Yeah, that part. Um, absolutely, we need. I'm trying to see if there are any. I should have my glasses on. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the people who appreciate me using my voice. Thank you to all the people who understand. You know, as much as I use the word rant, I don't really say shit that doesn't have um, an end game attached to it. You know, most of the most of the things I talk about uh, are connected to progress. Um, what do you think about the reality TV show? Queens of R&B. I was disappointed. It was too much drama. Um, let me tread lightly on this. Because I love all the ladies, right? I don't have a problem with none of them. Um, personally at all. And even though Latasha and... and I, well, not Latasha and I. Rocky and my husband had a whole thing. You know, my husband's like... They, they like, it's over. But it's what happened. And that's the thing. When shit happens, you got to say it happened. Like, just because you're over it doesn't mean you can't talk about the fact that it happened. Let's talk about it. So, the Queens of R&B show, that's the show Mona Scott produced, right? I mean, that kind of says it all, right? Uh, Mona has a brand of, 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 of TV that she does, right? I think that's the one thing that we have to get out of. Being so shocked and appalled at shit that we pretty much know is going to be what it's going to be. Like, it's just like, <gasps> that's what it is. That is, you know, you watch Love and Hip Hop, you knew what it was. Everybody who signed up for it knew what they were signing up for. I watched an interview with Candy and Mona. 
And um, shout out to Candy and, and, and shout out to Mona. I mean, look, this is the other thing. Just because I tell the truth about how I feel about stuff does not mean I have a personal problem with somebody. That's where I think I always get in trouble because I be thinking I'm cool with people and I just tell them what I got to say and then they be like, no, bitch, because you said whatever. I'm like, but I'm going to be fake about it. So had a con I watched the conversation with Mona and, and Candy and then I'm about to get off of here for real because it's about to be a three hour live. Had a conversation with Mona. I mean, watched the conversation with Mona and Candy and one thing that kind of just was cause for alarm for me is that Mona was telling Candy that she was going to do an escape movie. And Candy was like, huh? And Mona was like, yeah, I'm going to do a, um, uh-oh. Pause due to poor connection. So Mona was like, yeah, I'm going to do a show. I'm going to do a escape, uh, a movie. And, and I know, and Candy was like, well, how are you going to do a movie without telling us? And then Mona was like, I'm going to do it. You know, I'll tell you what it is. Trust me, you'll be happy with it or something. I'm paraphrasing. But basically Mona was like, please, I'm about to do this movie. And, and you ain't really got nothing to say about it. We already working on it. And I was just thinking to myself, wow. Like, because I wish... Somebody would tell me what they're going to do about my life and my career. And I'm not trying to cause any friction in that space. I'm just saying, like, that is, the, you know, I, that's the thing we got to get out of. We got to get out of this this space of, like, feeling like we have license to take people's stories and people's stuff and, and like, turn it into something. I'm not saying that was what she said. I'm not saying that's what she said. Apparently, she got some power to do it because she said she was going to do it. And Candy was a little surprised. And I don't know if she's really going to do it. I don't know. She Maybe she might have been joking. I don't know. But what I'm going to say is that ain't nobody going to tell me what they're going to do about my stuff without it being a whole, like, issue. And I think that is what we um, have to start being real more transparent with, with, with each other about. People will always be able to tell your story if you don't own it. People will always be. I mean, and if you're a public figure, that live is acting funny, y'all. It's probably acting funny because I've been on here for too long at, on Instagram, not over here. If the Instagram drops out. I'm still on YouTube because YouTubers be going for like five hours. I'm not going to do it tonight, but I'm on YouTube. So, oh, why didn't y'all tell me I had crust on my lips? That's terrible. Shame. Um, we have to educate and inform each other. We have to educate and inform each other and remind and let each other know. This Instagram is about to go. Let each other know how to make better business decisions and how to structure better deals. I had to learn that a very hard, difficult way. It was a long journey for me to get there. So what I will say is ain't nobody going to be sitting up across from me telling me what they're doing about my story and my stuff. And the reason why is because, again, I learned the hard way with R&B Divas. That ownership is everything. Ownership is everything. And without it, you have nothing but fame, which is a vapor. And you're going to work your whole life if you will work for hire. And I don't know why so many people try to prevent us from having ownership opportunities. Because really, all of these big companies that think it's better for them to own everything, you better off partnering with the creatives. Because you're always a happy creative, a, a creative who knows what the hell, good ones, good ones, partner with good ones. You're going to make money. I'm not joking when I say any network that gives me a check. The stream pause. Let me say it again for Instagram. I'm not joking when I say any network that gives me a check. I'm going to turn it into a big, we're going to flip it with, the, with what's going on in here. Ain't no, listen, I ain't missing nothing when it comes to creativity. I'm going to toot my horn. I'm going to, I'm going to let it be known. I will get you to the bag. And the proof is in the pudding. Because R&B divas and Hollywood divas and uh, From the Bottom Up and uh, Sokin's Cabaret, a.k.a. Pussy Valley, and any show that people allow the process the creative process to happen and not, yeah, my battery's about to die. It's time for me to get off of this. Any show that allows the process to happen and creatives to be in the space of safely feeling safe to create. That's what we want, y'all. Creatives want to just feel safe and we want it to be a fair deal. And if the writers are asking for 2% of a hundred, the writers are asking for 2% of a hundred percent, give them 2%. I'm asking for credit 
and to be paid off of an amazing story that anybody watching worth WIRFmedia.com, looking at the comparison video, knowing that I copyrighted in 2004, knows is infringement. Pay the creatives, work together to build awesome, incredible projects and content, and just make sure that you're taking care of the people that are giving you the content that is making your network go. The middlemen don't mean shit. Phil don't mean nothing to this situation at R&B Divas. He's a middleman. These middlemen that are doing these deals, that are getting these creatives caught up, these, these unnecessary managers, there's some great managers out there. We got great managers. I've been lucky to have great managers in my life and career. I have friends who are great managers. Let me tell you, if you got a great manager who has your back and wants the best for you, the sky is the limit. But if you got a middleman who is selling you out for a half-assed deal because they want a piece of the pie from the big boys, hey, hey, ho, ho, corporate greed has got to go and so do the middleman. Phil Thornton is the middleman on r and Period. Let's not have that be the reason why great content and great stories don't get to the people. Don't let the person, the monkey in the middle, that up for everybody. All right, guys. Uh, this was a long live. I feel really uh, refreshed and excited about the future. And I'm sure that there are people who will dissect this and take chunks of this live and figure out a way to make it messy. Have at it. Actually, y'all not trademark my name, so be careful about how you use it. I own myself too. All of it. I'm I'm by I'm getting all of it. All of it. Be careful how you use it because I don't start none, but I will make sure that I fight for what I've worked my whole career to maintain, which is my character and my integrity and my intellectual properties. All right. This was fun. I think this was like the longest um, live I think I've done. This is a very, very long live. It's two hours and 16 minutes. But we want to share information like this because um, it doesn't get shared often enough. Prayers to Jamie Foxx. You guys, I talked about ownership I talked about our, oh, I think I hit every, I hit, I'm looking at my whiteboard. I think I got all of my issues on, on this little Nights with Nikki impromptu tonight. I talked to production. No, 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 I didn't talk that. Uh, Faith and I are, real quick, Faith and I are actively in conversations with uh, networks. We're very, very excited about bringing you guys a new season of, t uh, of um, R&B Divas. Um, I'm also in conversations about from the bottom up. Um, I'm in conversations about two scripted projects that I'm super duper excited about. Hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll be able to share that with you guys. The update on P Valley, which I've been sharing consistently is very simple. Um, they, uh, lost the two motions to dismiss. Thank God. Um, LA is expediting this thing and fast tracking it. It's moving really quickly. And this next phase is very, 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 very important. It's a big deal, y'all. This summary judgment thing is a big deal. And it took one year and 49 days to get those two motions cleared. Um, and thank God it's not going to take that long. Um, somebody said, some people don't like Oprah but have to respect her because she understands the power of ownership. Yep, when I was in L.A., I remember... Um, going by her studios and I saw OWN and it's crazy because that's her initials Oprah Winfrey Network own she own own she told us she told us Oprah told us Oprah told us own but y'all every time I try to get to ownership they be blocking me and I'm not exaggerating and I'm not just trying to create drama for y'all they be exaggerate I mean they be blocking me look at Phil Thornton he's still trying to take my shit Phil Thornton is still trying to take my shit. He tried to, he, he took it. He took it back in the day when he was very instrumental in R&B Divas franchise going away. He took it. I, everybody hated me. I was terrible. I set up the, Nikki's the reason. She's the reason. She's the reason. She did it. She did it. Nobody likes her. She's terrible. And she better be lucky that I gave her money out of my pocket, which is a lie. He didn't give me shit. I hired you. How you gave me some money out your pocket? 
Um, and now you're like, oh, I would work with Nikki and Faith. You weren't going to work with us because you was going behind our back, setting up a whole situation with a bunch of women that we weren't even aware that that's what you was trying to do. You're like, oh, I've talked to the ladies. They're ready to go. Who did you talk to that's ready to move this thing along without me and Faith? Who did you talk to, Phil Thornton, that agreed to do R&B Divas and you told them that you didn't talk to me and Faith and me and Faith don't know nothing about it. And they agreed to do it. And you arguing with TV one like we got to do this and give us the name. and da, 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 da. Like that's such a backstabbing ass, disrespectful ass person that does that consistently keeps doing it. You know, I'm in the middle of a copyright infringement litigation. You know, I have invested. You ain't it's up under no rock. We don't follow each other and we blocked. But you watch everything I do and you all up in my business. I could care less about what you do. The only reason why I'm talking about you today is because you were negatively referencing the brand that I own. But why would you go and like set up something for something that you know I created? I cast it. I did the sizzle reel. I flew everybody down. I created R&B Divas. Now, the show that it became everybody was a part of everybody but you know Shonda Rhimes created Grey's Anatomy and all the actors made an amazing show P-Valley lied and told y'all she created P-Valley and all the actors made it an amazing show so creating something means something and people should be able to say that I should be able to say I created that shit and I should be able to get credit for the creating the shit because everybody knows that I did. And the fact that you were having conversations with people behind my back while I was in the middle of a copyright infringement litigation. Talking to people about doing a new season of a show that I created and Faith and I are executive producers of and did not call us and talk to us. And then when you find out that you can't because we own it. Now, all of a sudden, you want to work with us? Man, please. I don't care what nobody think about how I feel about you. You know how I feel about you. I know how I feel about you. We know how we feel about each other. And that's all that matters. It's never going to work because you're shady and you're messy. That's it. So, um, and and really, I would advise you to keep my name out your mouth because, you you know, you, you're going to be probably inspired or irritated enough to try to say something. I'm not talking... I'm sorry, I was about to be disrespectful. Trust me, we don't have no problem. Let me tell y'all another thing. Don't think that because we have not landed the ship of R&B Divas that there are not plenty of landing pads that have reached out to us that are very, very interested in it. I'm not rushing it this time. I did it the last time. I rushed it and we hurried up and did a deal. And when we did the deal, we realized that the deal gave us no equity. We realized that the deal was one that gave Phil... Thornton, the power to manipulate everybody. And I'm not the only person who has said this. Faith and um, Selena Johnson talked about it on that show that they used to have back in the day. Me and Angie Stone talked about it. Several people have talked about producers, messy producers. We just didn't name the messy one. I did. Nobody else did. And now you know he messy because who disrespects the head of a network the way he disrespected the head of TV one? Right? Now, what's, what he going to be sick about, I ain't going to say that. That's premature. But listen, we ain't got no problems when it comes to where we're going to land this plane for r and Divas. It's really just going to be a matter, a question of, of, of where we get the best deal for everybody, right? And the other thing I want all of the ladies who would potentially consider being a part of this franchise who may be a little on edge because they're like, oh, Nikki owns it, Nikki. Could, it ain't even like that. That's not even the energy I'm coming from. I'm coming from the same energy I was coming from when I created it a long time ago. And that is that I want us all to win. And this is something that's going to be all of our shit. But Phil Thornton cannot touch it. He can't breathe on it. I don't care who he manages. If Phil Thornton is your manager and you're going to be on R&B Divas, he got to stand outside. Wherever we at. He can't be in the room. Because I'm not going to risk. That is like... Leaving the gate to the hen house open for the fox to come in it and destroy it. When somebody has shown you who they are, when somebody has given you a very clear picture of what will happen if you fuck with them, some t- a reason, season, and lifetime, and that individual was a season. And yeah, if I got this like vibe that yeah, nah, 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 nah. you know what's that? Knock, knock, knock. Stop knocking. Don't come knocking at my door. Uh. Come on, y'all. Sing with me. Eh, 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 eh. Ring, ring, ring. Let the phone stop. I don't want you calling me no more. Stop. It's done. 
Funny how the tables turn. Okay, that's ugly. I shouldn't be doing all that. See, that's me doing all that. And then I, it's really, it's unbecoming. I shouldn't do that. But yeah, it's over. Um, thank you for standing with me. Everything is going to turn out great. Uh, I'm going to try to dis disconnect from social media, which is why I gave y'all this, this long ass live. And I said, let me go on and do it tonight. Cause I was going to do it on Sunday, but I was like, Oh, Sunday's mother's day. And I'm going to go through my motherless child mother's day feelings. Um, and shout out to anybody out there who is going to be going through mother's day without their mom. Um, they're always hard. They so hard y'all. They are so hard. Ooh, I don't wish that on nobody. I don't wish it on nobody. Hard core Mother's Day without your mama. But I want to make my mother proud. She's part of the reason why I'm fighting as hard as I'm fighting for this P Valley thing. Um, I love you too. Thank you. <laughs> right. I'm taking credit for my stuff. Right? People, why she always telling everybody? Because. Do y'all know what I went through to get to this? Do y'all know? Do y'all remember? Do y'all remember what all the shit I went through? You guys, I lost everything a couple of times, including people I love very much. So, yes. Somebody said I'm watching you on, on Martin right now. Oh, woo, woo, woo. <clears throat> oh, woo. Okay. <laughs> Even when there's nothing there but gloom. It's late, so I can't do the big voice thing. My husband be like, what the hell are you doing? Um, shout out to Darius McCrary's father, Howard McCrary, who, who helped me through that Martin episode. It was awesome. You guys, I miss the good old days. I miss them so much. I miss the times when people respected each other. I miss the times when artists got dressed. Everybody running around in his butt ass naked, shaking their ass, titties out. I'm the, no, yeah, it's a titties zone, but like, I just miss it. Like, I saw a clip of Whitney. They were, they were showing those kind of like, if you were, where were you when this iconic event happened on Instagram somewhere? And then one of the clips was Whitney. Um, and she's like, you better lay low that thing. I was there. I remember that. I remember seeing that. I wasn't there, but I was watching it. And I just remember, like, those were the moments where we, we really had um, pride and, and we were really, you know, it's just. And, and I know for those of you who weren't there, there to experience these moments, I know I keep saying I'm going to get off of here, but I, God, I put it on my heart. For those of you who weren't there to experience those moments of um, being at an award show and, like, watching, you know, Sade be brushed past, brisked past you or Janet, you know what I'm saying? Like the, being in the room with that greatness and like being, being able to really experience that, um, unity, uh, uh of the, the nineties and, you know, the industry then, I think because we were, it was fresher and it was newer. And, and I think, you know, as a society, you know, we weren't so consumed with hurting each other and taking advantage of each other. And, and executives really did care about music and they really did care about artists and they really did, the, you know, and, and, and it's all relative because, you know, and be clear, when I say executives caring about artists, you guys have to learn how to separate. Um, executives don't give you contracts. Corporations do. Companies do, right? So when I say... J Jerry Greenberg was an amazing record man, amazing executive. He was also a musician. He was the guy who signed us to MJJ. He was the reason Michael Jackson signed Brownstone. He was a wonderful guy. He was an incredible man. He's my still my Uncle Jerry. We talk to this day. He didn't make me sign that contract. The corporate structure put those things together. And it's hard to go and point out who within that corporate structure was actually responsible for those agreements that we signed. So when we speak of, it sounds like we're double talking when we be like, oh, those were the good old days and that was a good time. When we speak of those good times, we talk about times when music mattered. We talk about the times when, you want nobody punching us. And I don't mean punching like that. I mean like a, a punch in to go in and redo something meant that you literally had to like 
cut the tape and put the tape like it was it wasn't just like oh do it again like pro tools how you can just go in there and just redo the shit and add you know uh auto tune and all that stuff no you had to actually do the work back in the day and having to do the work back in the day really developed us into really amazing creative artists who really understood how to reach people with our gifts and that's the reason why if you love me and grapevine and weak and Let's keep just kicking and in vote and like all these records that y'all are still playing and all the stuff that y'all are still listening to, all the Aretha Franklin, all the Nina Simone. The reason why you're still listening to that, I want y'all executives, we're coming here, lean in, lean in, lean in. All you high powered executives and corporate people and all that shit, lean in because your girl about to give you some knowledge. Come on, come on, come on. Here it is. You know that feeling you feel when you listen to that record? Whatever that record is, that record, pick that record, pick that record that when you was in law school or in accounting school or in how to run a big corporation school or in the car with your girl when you first fell in love. You know, that record that you heard, that that song, that that body of work, you know, that movie that you saw, that script that you read, that scene and Billie Holiday and Billy D. Williams when he when she was high and she was in there on that on that toilet, y'all. And she was in there. She just blew out. And he walked past and they had just finished fighting and tussling. And he fixed his hair. And he looked at her when he walked past and he said, I'm going for a walk. And when I come back, I don't want to find you here. Those moments, those come from really creative, talented, developed people. Those historic, classic, amazing moments in writing, in history, in creativity. They come from a spiritual place. They come from a really dope, amazing place. Take care of those people. Take care of us. Look out for us. Make us your friends. Be good with us. Be easy with us. Cause we are we are essential workers. We are we, we that's gonna stick with you. You know how like you hear a song and you can smell the meat cooking on the grill, or you hear a song and you can hear your uncles arguing over a, a card game downstairs in the basement while you try to slide that beer off the table and drink that little last drop. All those memories, that soundtrack of our lives, all of that comes from writers. The ice cream truck music comes from a writer. Take care of your creatives. Stop taking advantage of us. Stop abusing us. We're the cool fucking kids. Educate us. Allow us to grow and to thrive and to live long, prosperous lives. When I found out or when we thought Jamie Foxx, we were losing Jamie Foxx earlier today. Because we had some fake black news because there's a lot of shit going on that we need to quit. But when we found out that we were losing Jamie, we thought we were losing Jamie Foxx. I was just so mad. And I said I was just snatching air because I was just mad. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, why do we keep losing? Why do black people, why do black art, why do we have to lose Whitney? We got to lose Michael. We got to lose We just keep losing people. And now that we've discovered that we are not losing a brother and he is at home and he's getting better. Let that be. A, a, and I'm going to end it on this for real. Let what happened with Jamie Foxx today. Because I love me some Jamie Foxx. He probably like, but I don't remember you. It was back in the day. We was cool back then. We was cool back then. Um, but he's just a really lovable, great guy. And it just felt like when we found out oh, that he potentially, you know, was, was, you know, potentially on his way up out of here. It's like, damn. It's like we all, I felt like it, it, we all got kind of a second chance. And I hope that Jamie... You know, it's one 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 cool thing is being able to see what people, how much people love you and how much people are rooting for you. It was almost like if he was in a coma or if he was in ICU, like, you know, just to be able to look back and see how much we love you, Jamie Foxx, how much we we want you to be here, how much we need you. Whew. Um, that's dope. And I'm not talking about a no fake ass Kelly Price way, like just waiting around to see what people got to say. But I'm talking about in a way where we really thought we were losing something really special. And we realized that we weren't. And it was like a second opportunity to really like, you know, reevaluate and like be grateful. We just need to do that across the board. Like we really need to look at that as an opportunity to reset and understand that our kids, as much as we are, you know, busy and we need a release from all the stress of life and everything is don't have to be so serious and whatever. Like people are running into grocery stores and malls and shit. And like people are snapping the fuck out and they're doing really crazy stuff. And we have to just do better. We have to treat each other better. 
We got to love on each other more. And we have to always remember that all of us has a burden. and All of us has something that is hurting us and that we have to get over and get through. A hurdle, an issue, finances, health, whatever. And just be easier with each other. That's it. Just be easier with each other. Just love on each other more and spread more love and positivity. And yeah, I'm a little emotional because it's that Jamie Foxx thing. That, that really was like, oof. It's like, who next? What's next? What's going on? Take care of each other. And again, for all those people who are hoping and praying that I'm able to resolve my issues with Phil Thornton, they're resolved. It's a wrap. He can go over there and I'm going to go over there and all is well. All right. Love you guys. Two hours and 34 minutes. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I appreciate you guys so, so much. And I'm going to take a break from social media. So y'all watch this video if you just jumped in at the last minute. I'm going to take a break for a couple of days because I really have to, you know, put my heart into this um, litigation. Pray for me. July 5th is a big day, a huge day. That is the day that I find out whether or not the L.A. judge will let us get to the jury, which is the phase that I've been waiting to get to since the day I filed this move on case. Get to the jury. And it's not simple, and it's not easy, and it's not clean cut. Shout out to my attorneys who are doing an awesome job. Shout out to all of you who have been riding with me. And please support one another and be easy with each other. All right. Peace. Bye, y'all.